This episode of the Procrastinators Podcast was brought to you by our bonus episode. Go to patreon.com slash the procrastinators and pledge $5 or more to get access to all our bonus monthly episodes. Last month's episode was Charlie Brown versus Inuyasha. Charlie Brown is a popcorn nihilist. He, he's, a lo- he's a loner with a heart of gold. I'm going to slap this book closed to show you how hefty okay. it is. Oh, shit! That's what you're up against! Sorry, I thought the show nothing. was about race realism. How can the black Tetsaiga be the ultimate form? Oh, my God. <laughs> With the enhanced wind scar ability, let alone the Kono Gosha Diamond Tetsaiga go? with the adamant... Charlie Brown has has the nuclear bomb, and that's a very powerful weapon that, <laughs> yeah, that, right, that, right. that right. ravages Japanese people. But do you really think... <laughs> In my heart of hearts, I, be- I think that Inuyasha could have kicked that football. That's patreon.com slash the procrastinators, giving you a boner every single time. I am the one who's in charge. I am the one who says yes, no, now, here. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Procrastinators Podcast. I'm the best guy ever. Oh, yes, and I've almost forgot. The PCP is a podcast with a bunch of internet creators, mostly me. Uh, (laughs) These guys are also here for some reason, but we all make stuff on the internet, and here we are uh, talking about our thoughts on stuff. We've got Hypocrite here. Oh, gee, I I sure hope I, uh, I'm going to do okay in this, uh, this, uh, oh, oh, boy. Oh, come on, oh, gee, Gib. I... Didn't you hear my confident opening oh, there? Let's, oh, let's... no, I'm so Indeed. sorry. <laughs> uh, we've got Tom Oliver here. I can confidently say that Nate Ooh. is not as good as me because oh. I'm the real best guy. There you go, classic of all faking time. until you make it, everybody. There, there it is. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Fuck you, buddy. <laughs> And we've got uh, 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 Lethal Aurora Mage here. I'm gonna bend this podcast over a table and nail it in the ass. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa. Oh, that is confident. Now, that's the kind of (laughs) hardcore uh, uh, MGTOW sentiment you'd expect from Lethal Aurora Mage. Uh, Well, Uh, guys, today. It's so so, so funny how, like. Mage going her own way. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Go on, Gib. Fucking. (laughs) Oh, I'm so unconfident. No, like um, the the, the what I said sounded like mm-hmm. something I would have said at the beginning of this podcast. If you go back, That's like true. that just That's is true. what I sounded like. And now oh. <laughs> I'm, I I like it didn't it wasn't even a joke. It, it like people would probably be confused. Like, huh? I guess he's still <laughs> still unconfident as as we expect. If they listen to episode one and then skip straight to uh, exactly. episode like eighty six or whatever this is now, they'd be like, "Oh, that Gib still shaking in his boots, quaking in his." <laughs> well, Gib, pants. we all know that once you become a racist and start saying racial slurs all the time, you invariably mm. get more confident. I'm sure we'll talk about that point you, at some. You kind of have moment. to. You kind of have to, to survive you gotta... the onslaught. You know, like if you want to go out there and and make race realism your thing, you really got to have a strong <laughs> personality to back that up these days. And I suppose you probably always did. Uh, but uh, but there it is. There it is. And uh, th- that is our topic, everybody. It is confidence. Confidence, 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 which I'm sure our audience has in spades. I have no doubt about it. Our wonderful <laughs> teenage boy audience uh, definitely is, is smashing puss uh, on the reg. Oh, wait a minute. Has there been an incident? Huh? What? Oh, oh, sorry. I, I heard a noise and I thought I might have been cut off because uh, I didn't hear you guys laughing uproariously <laughs> to my hilarious <laughs> jokes. And that was a big problem. Okay, okay. I left in my head. And joining us late, oh, who could it be but uh, Digi? Digi hey, bro. Hey, I got here. tons of confidence. That's what this is about, right? <laughs> He's yeah. got the confidence to join in uh, whenever the fuck he wants to be casually late for, for the podcast. What do you know? <laughs> what do you know? Late. Impressive. Uh, yeah. Well, so here we are, everybody. Confidence is our topic, and confidence is our attitude. So let's head over to Urban Dictionary and find out what the fuck we're dealing with here. Uh, so the top definition of confidence is absolute could care fucking less what everybody thinks. That is, that's okay. That's it. Uh, and there's another really one. really say though. that is what confidence is, but okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the second one here is confidence. The thing girls say that they want in a guy when they themselves usually don't have the confidence to make the first move. A MGTOW wrote this definition and I <laughs> yeah. love it. Oh, that's, that's good. That's good. <laughs> 
Uh, so, uh, third so, definition, so which, confidence. Uh, yeah, yeah. Which, which side of the fence is everyone on? Who is a for and against confidence? I'm against it. I'm I think it's a bad house. idea. I think it's dangerous. Oh. I think we. I think Whoa, we. Uh, dangerous. I, I'm confidently against confidence. This is just a bad idea. Wait, <laughs> wait. That's I an can't oxymoron. tell if you're fucking joking or not because I've never heard anyone state that they're against I, I just, confidence. I just wanted to say I'm confidently against it. Like as a oh, fucking okay. joke. Well, confidence. That's confidence a, is like charisma, right? They're basically the same thing. And uh, mm. charismatic leaders have throughout history been responsible think, for some fucked I think up there's shit. You know, lots of people who have tons of confidence and no charisma, like uh, that mm. anime snob or something. Like, he's got charisma. Well, uh, def- could you define <laughs> charisma as you, you mean it here? You almost said the anime snob has charisma. <laughs> that's a that's a dangerous. <laughs> Well, a dangerous, uh, uh, I mean, he has a, he has it? a type of charisma for sure. But yeah, like, yeah. I mean, to be charismatic would basically mean that like you have an attitude that makes people sort of want to follow you or like mm-hmm, to, mm-hmm. to just take an interest in you as a person. He has his legion he has, of sick He has fans. like a charisma a that's like fans. cringy, a charisma, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's yeah. good. But I think there's lots of people who like don't have any charisma but are so confident that they do. Like, and someone like him, yeah, he does have, I mean, he has enough charisma to have a following. He has a type of charisma. You know, you know like, who has a... The, the, uh, the amount he thinks he has is vastly greater than that. You know, yeah. what it reminds me of, uh, it's not, it, it's like the, the mental equivalent of retard strength. Because, you know, like, a, 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 a one who is mentally deficient can have maximum confidence that what they're doing is yeah. correct, like, like, a, like a baby crying. Uh, but then, you know, like, they're caught and, like, no one's going to give a shit or, you know, want to do shit for him. So, okay, okay. I you know why that is, here. right? It's because, you, like, with normal people, we only use 10% mm. of our brains at a time. Whoa, but yeah. if you're not concentrating <laughs> on which 10% you use, then you're just using your whole brain all the time. Whoa. So you can't, like, <laughs> think about any one thing, but you can do everything. You know what I'm that saying? Shit. Sounds sounds legit to me. Yeah. That sounds like science to me, for sure. <laughs> I actually saw a video uh, earlier uh, about, mm. like, um, how the, the more confident you are, the, like, the people who are the most confident that they're good at their job are the, mm. the ones who are the least effective at that job. Like those yeah. people at the post office who give me shit every time I go in. They're they're not that great, and they also resent me for being there. That's socialism at work, everybody. That's socialism at work. That's what it does. That's uh, my that's, political point. That stuff <laughs> there interests it is. me like crazy, and that's what what is called the mm-hmm. Dunning-Kruger effect. Um, yeah, that's mm-hmm. the one. Believing that you are vastly superior right. than, uh, than what you actually are, just because... It's like the less you know about how much better you could be, the, like right, right. You know, uh, it's funny. I was just recording like a huge vlog, uh, explaining a bunch mm. of shit about myself and like how I'm always accused of being like super egotistical and stuff like that, mm-hmm. um, because I think I'm better than like most anime YouTubers. <laughs> but I consider right. that a really low bar. And, right. Uh, <laughs> That's like a good the point. way I see it, there's there's like uh, there's tons of people I look up to who I consider to be way better than me, and I'm like, oh, there's tons of room for for improvement, you know. Um, mm-hmm. Which is why I think I'm able to be successful, and I see things that way. But I've definitely seen people who are like, you know, I'm already amazing. I don't need to improve anything, and then they wallow in obscurity, and like they don't understand why, you know. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That sort of reminds me of how like, you know, saying you're like one of the better brony analysts is like that doesn't mean much. <laughs> yeah. No, it but, means I nothing. Mean, <laughs> it kind of reminds me of like, so so the world has changed, you know, and like guys like. Oh, I don't know. Uh, like, like guys like Doctor Wolf are now like exposed to like a worldwide audience, and they're able to garner like some small following. That yeah, I mean, uh, he has more subs than me, so I'm 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 not trying to say that he's like a total shit or anything. So I, I respect the work that he's done, but like you can you can tell there's an there's an internal limit within him about like what he's going to do. How high is going to reach, and you can see the walls that he's put up for himself just based on like the kind of stuff he's doing and where he's going to go, and and like the the sort of people he's going to attract, aka weirdo bronies, you know, who who got no direction in life and whatnot. And yet, like if he was if he was out in the world, like the the real world equivalent of that is like a cult leader. You got like a cult leader, yeah. and that that's what Doctor Wolf is to me. He's he's like a weirdo cult leader. That's what he would be without the internet. And I think he's like Mormon, so that might actually be relatively accurate anyway. Uh, but but the point is like we should probably you, you attract... name drop fewer people in this. I feel like we started enough shit. on Doctor Wolf is lately. a meme. No one's gonna object to talking about Doctor. <laughs> Wolf. I don't I don't even hate Doctor Wolf the way like Ben does. I just find him a curiosity. Uh, so I'm just saying that like people form these very small communities where they're like uh, worshipped like gods, you know, or uh, that, that's an exaggeration. But like they're treated 
as like the king of their little pond and people yeah. are often satisfied with that but we with the internet now you can compare yourself to the entire world so yeah. like where you're saying that people give you shit for saying you're like the best anime al analyst oh, it, it's like, funny because they also accuse yeah. me of having that exact cult you're talking about and like i don't i'm not right. satisfied with that like i don't you know i don't think uh that's mm -hmm. good that well, I have, the, like, a cult your, of your people commenters, who, like, worship me, you know? Uh, of course. And your, your commenters are formed from a lot of different people, and they each have the luxury to, like, choose the attack vehicle they want to go with against, you know, any person they disagree with online. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, they, they've got the luxury of, of doing that and not having to be logically consistent because they're an anonymous shit poster. So, yeah, that's cool. But anyway, that's not particularly relevant to content. No, I, I mean, I, it is. I, gonna, I was going to say... Yeah. Um, uh, how I think of my own level of confidence, and I like mm. I, I like to consider myself like low in confidence, because mm. uh, you know I do good things, and then when people you know see that I am like oh it's not that good, and then mm -hmm. they say but you're you know your work's so great way better than mine, and I'm just like hey 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 it's exactly <laughs> what I want to see great you know like I don't know whether I actually think I have low confidence does or that not, give you that like does that but give it makes you that me feel good like... to make other people feel like they're comparing themselves to me and it's it's bad for them and it's like yes yeah, sick you know do you, do you like getting the feeling there of like hey, if I really did it if I was like truly out there I would like be so good you, you, you know what I'm getting at with that it's mm -hmm. like if you like lower your you know, you know what I mean I, I don't know like I'm I I ugh. You know, I, 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 like, I like to think that I'm not very confident uh, because mm -hmm. of that reason. But I think I am actually not very confident. I don't know how to measure it. Like, like it's it's too, like, you have to be very introspective I, to well, know. I think that, I mm -hmm. think people who, I think everybody has, like, a lack, like, nobody's perfectly confident. But people who are, like, mm -hmm. particularly unconfident think that other people are, like, just confident about everything. Like, yeah, I think some right. people look at me and think I am confident about everything, and that is not even I'm, – I'm like, everything I do, there's, like, an element of, oh, God, am I doing the right thing, like, in the long term? You know, like, uh -huh. is this going to bite me in the ass, whatever I'm doing, or, like, or is this even good, you know? And, like, I just have enough confidence to do it anyways, and I think that's what the real power of confidence is. It's not about, like – thinking everything you do is definitely going to be great. It's just about mm -hmm. thinking that there's enough of a chance people will like it that you should do it anyways, you know? Well, there's, like, there's a couple different kinds. I think, I mean, I've learned in my experience that there's a couple different ways that, like, confidence is segmented. There is... There is such a thing as like pure confidence, and it's it's things that guys who are like I learned about this when I like looked into like pickup artistry stuff. Like you can you can develop a sense of just raw confidence in yourself, which is kind of like Zen. It's kind of just like accepting oblivion of the world and like accepting that like consequences don't matter and like just learning to accept like the fatality of existence. Uh, like and that'll allow you to do things like approach a girl like be rejected and not care and then just continue on your quest to you know keep doing that until you like smash puss or whatever so th that's the kind of like raw separate confidence but then there's the kind that in a way is much easier to obtain but also is kind of much harder and uh, so what, what i'm talking about is like confidence developed through acquiring skill and through acquiring mastery yeah. like of a specific thing like for example and i think this is really the kind that i have obtained over the years because i've just done so many vlogs so many videos so many i don't know like songs and stuff i guess I'm, I'm, i haven't done as many of those so I'm actually yeah. much less confident in like my singing ability than other stuff but like you j just by doing this like if someone asked me like to be on a podcast i'm like i'm ready i got everything ready to go yeah. I'm, I'm prepared immediately i will have no problem doing this and i know i can talk I, for a fucking hour I if i need to a lot to. of that comes just from yeah. normal Normalizing it for yourself like exactly like exactly. I, I don't even know if I'm better at podcasting I've just done so fucking much of it that like how could I not be better or how could That's I exactly not do it? it you know like you you just get to a point where it's not a matter of can I or can't I it's I know I will. You know? <laughs> and that's like when a lot of people bring up confidence, a lot of it is like, I mean, I always picture like a nerdy guy who's like, I'm unconfident. What do I do? And the question is like, what do you want to do? What What is your yeah. goal? If the goal is to like get a girlfriend, then like immediately begin. Like, it's not hard. You just like just start start doing the things that will help you get your goal. Yeah. If you think you're unattractive, work on your appearance. And, and I think a lot of people stop themselves when they hear what the things they have to do are. They say, I can't do that. It's like everybody can mm -hmm. do that. It's a matter and of the thing that really pisses me off willing you are to just fucking go through with it you know absolutely and the worst argument you can ever make to yourself or hear when people say this things is like no i can't do that because that would be me being inauthentic to myself 
when uh, they uh, when like yeah. that kind of stuff comes up. Now that pisses me that, off. That reminds me of this this thing I heard at this like talk, um, mm -hmm. where it was like talking about creativity and like stuff and like um, you know your projects and you know what, are they gonna mm -hmm. go anywhere? And she <laughs> she said this thing which like stuck with me because of how like alternative it is to the usual like motivational speech. It's mm -hmm. like not everybody deserves you know to be successful and you know maybe mm -hmm. you don't maybe you don't deserve yeah. to be successful <laughs> that's great I and love it was that. like it's an empowering thought though yeah because yeah. it's like you don't deserve it until you have you know you, until you put the work in to be good right. enough to be Fucking a person do who it. does deserve it, it people just like, feel yeah. like they're in people feel like they're entitled to a lot in the world and i think it really a lot of good comes from recognizing that the universe owes you nothing and is completely yeah. Uh, uh, it does not give a shit about you. Completely indifferent to your existence. Right. And to, once you recognize that, and you cast away all that frou frou bullshit about karma and whatnot, and you just recognize, I need to, I need to uh, write this shit, my write this ship myself. And I'm gonna get where I want to go. Then, uh, then you can start to make steps towards it. You know. You know something you said earlier, Nate, about mm. um, people saying it would be untrue to themselves to do a thing. My mm -hmm. response to that would be like, you are not, you are nothing. Like, there is no you. It's what you do yeah. that is yeah. you. Like, you are just whatever you are performing at the time. There's no, like, solid... Like, like your personality or whatever is not, like, an object in your brain that mm -hmm. informs all your actions. It's like... I feel like a lot you, of it comes from this idea of a soul, I think. A lot of it stems yeah, from that like, notion. Yeah, like, oh, I've got... I, my soul is like this. It's like, no, you are mm -hmm. just whatever you are performing. You know, like, whatever you're yep. doing, yep. that is who you are. And if you do the same thing for long mm -hmm. enough, you'll forget that you were ever anything different, you know? Like, look Which at me, was I was born, like I was me. born, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I'm just I was a born human meme now. Oh, gosh. <laughs> we were all born with brony souls, but we chose to change <laughs> them. We chose to I sculpt them for really good. I think some people really see it like that. I think Some you, do, for sure. Like, people who left the brony community and people view it as like, <laughs> you changed, and it's like, yeah, I yeah. was never no shit. a solid thing. Like I was. Like, Everybody it's not like, fucking changes. Yeah, <laughs> like that's just like, natural. If 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 you don't like endeavor to change, like if you if you think uh, every moment that you have an opinion on everything, like that is your opinion, and if you you know nobody th likes the idea of I don't know, like making a review and then uh, having mm -hmm. a different idea about it later and making another <laughs> review. Like nobody likes that idea for some reason. If you the, think the, the that idea you're that all... putting things on the internet is like, oh, that's the snapshot. That is this person. This person has talked about this thing, and now that is what they think forever. Right. But if you can you're... change your mind. You should be changing your mind constantly. Guys, uh, I want to say I want to say I slightly disagree. Like for what what Gib has said, like I agree with that. But with the whole mm -hmm. um, not doing things, like you thinking you can't do a thing because that's not me thing, like. Um, Personally, I have changed over the years as a person, you know, so I'm not the same person I was like 10 years ago sure, or whatever. Sure. So like progress happens, people change, people um, do become different. However, I feel like a lot of people can sometimes like don't change at the core. For instance, like there's still things I know that like 100% I'm never going to do in my life because that's not the kind of person I am and yeah. not the kind of person I, I would be able to become. I, I'm just mm -hmm. not capable of it. Like, right. There I'm are limits, of course. Be, I'm never going to be the party girl that goes out every night and, you know, drinks a lot and clubs and... Do you even want to be that, though? Like, no, well, that's the question. But, like, I would like mm -hmm. to be more outgoing and not scared of people <laughs> I, I mean i think that Good. i think there's a there's a big difference between like you know like y you can change things about yourself but like if you don't want to be like if you don't even want to be that person then no you're never going to be that person but like if you were telling me like i want to be a party girl who goes out every night i'd be like well follow this 10 step program and you can be that person you know but like well i think if, i think if, the, if it's the, not something you can even is, envision yourself is as, then, the like, difficulty of, of stuff like that is like Oh, um, I don't really want to be an outgoing party person, but in order to meet people and get a girlfriend, right. I, I think you that's need a misconception, to become... though. Well, like, you know? like that's the way people th see a lot of like or, and, problems and, 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 like that. They have to do something they depends. don't want to do to get something that they yeah. do yeah. want to have. That's right. Like, I actually ha have had this sort of experience back um, in high school in, in an attempt to sort of uh, fit in with my fellow classmates and just like 
make some proper friends. I did actually go out and um, whenever they would do meetups and like drink alcohol and party and stuff, I did actually go out of my way and go out and try to mingle and, and see what it's about and just sort of blend in. And it didn't work out. I, I did it like several times and it's just, it's, it didn't happen. Would, I, I would didn't... you say that the, the problem was sort of realizing that fitting in wasn't something you really wanted, if that's what it meant? Mm, I... Like... Mm, I think it's, it's it, I think it's a matter of degrees. Like that's the whole thing. It's not mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like wanting something isn't like a binary thing. It's not like I want it or that's I don't true. want it. There's tons of things that like I want it, but I don't want it enough to go through this like yeah. process. I mean, so that's... sure, sure. Go like ahead. I want to be good at drawing, but like the amount of work I'd have to do to like really get super good at it, I'd rather do 3D instead because I have more fun right. doing that. I want both of them, sure, but sure. you only have so much time, you have so much effort, and I'd rather dedicate my time here. Than that. It doesn't mean I don't want that, it's just that I don't want it as much. So we have to make decisions right. that way. Like you can want to go out and party, but if you want that less than like hanging out at home and like reading a book well, or something, then you want things on those on the, different levels of degrees. You know, the, yeah. the, the, the coolest um, like uh, example of all this is um, I was watching a David Bowie documentary and there was this part where he said, I don't really want to be famous or a rock star or anything, but I'm doing it right now so that I have the resources at my disposal when I need them to do what I actually want to do. Yeah. Which there is you like, go. Great attitude. Like he, uh, he, he became a attitude. superstar to, so yep. that he could do whatever he wanted. And he he like, made he so became cool. a superstar so that his Minecraft Let's Plays would get so many views <laughs> when they came out. You that know, is like, totally the exact approach I have like at all. Like, me too. I, I fucking hate being famous, and I hate it more <laughs> every day. But like, you know, I can't make the kind of money I do without having some fame. And like, I like being able to eat out every day. So like, mm-hmm. I'm not interested <laughs> in being <laughs> a famous eating YouTuber. out every day, boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not interested in being a famous YouTuber, but I am interested in eating out every day. And like one facilitates. <laughs> the other, you know. Eating out every day, boy. Yeah. <laughs> you, There's number you. two. <laughs> but yeah, with, with regards to what Tom said, that was my approach to, um, to romance for like the last few years was romance like, eating out every day boy yeah <laughs> oh my God. Oh my dog. there it is i can confidently <laughs> say i'm ashamed of all of you right now <laughs> that, that that was my approach to to like after i had broke up with my ex-girlfriend like three mm-hmm. fucking years ago i think over yeah, three and a half yeah. years ago like for a long time it was like well I I have discovered I like sex a lot and I'd like to do more of it, but what will that require? Like, what will I have to do to meet women and, mm-hmm. like, be attractive and, like, flirt? It's, like, probably going to have to lose weight a little bit or, like, just yep, change yep. my appearance in some way, which I don't even really need to do. I just need to be more confident in myself. But, like, I definitely have to go out. Like, there's no way I can meet women without mm-hmm. going out and, like, putting myself out there. And I was, like... Man, I don't want to have to do that. Like, I want to sit around and make videos all day. Like, that's where my passion is. And, like, until I've changed some things about my life, I don't want to rush into that. And I think that's kind of what Tom was talking about. Like, that feeling of you will have to make sacrifices sometimes to get what you want. But, like, maybe you don't want to make those particular sacrifices right now. I mean, yeah. And it's about working smart, not working hard when it comes to all things, including this. And, like, just as you were saying before... Like, yeah, like, uh, we approach these things in different ways. Like, my whole goal, the reason that I've started doing any of this shit was because I wanted to be a meme on 4chan. That is my long-term <laughs> end game goal, to be a posted meme on 4chan. That's what this has all been for. Everything else is just filler until that I happens. I think it's working. It's slowly getting there. There's a couple threads. I've seen I've seen the images of worst guy ever pop up and whatnot, yeah. and uh, it's, it's good. It, it's I happened. like, I like how that's your end goal, and I did that without even wanting to or trying to how'd you do oh that's right because you were like the your i was picture mexican got christian bale dot jpeg <laughs> that's right that's so, right and I'm, wasn't your picture used for like some like fake thing fake, fake what okay was that Cupid profile yeah yes oh it was like it was like the brony dating uh profile or something or like the nerd loser profile yeah, yeah, something like that <laughs> Oh man, Dude, fucking something. incredible! <laughs> yeah, that's, so, that's really good. It's, uh, it's, it's good to know that I'm living your dream, but I can tell you, yeah. someone on the other side, not all it's cracked up to be. 
I yeah. understand. I understand. But but yeah, I, I gotta say, dreams someone, be memes. There's, there's I've also that lived that dream. There. It's it's not, not been great for me either. Well, <laughs> but but it's for like like I am I am one of them, you know, and yeah. and that attitude comes forth in my thing. So like. I, I mean, the goal is to not be there as, like, a loser that everyone hates. The goal right. would be as just, like, either a funny meme man or someone who's generally liked. Like the way they post, um, I think you I don't would know, be anyone. A's hash, like, slash our guy if they actually <laughs> let them post e stuff there. Yeah, would, it's, it's quite like possible. You. Yeah. Uh, honestly, like, V is more open to discussing e even yeah. though everyone says I think it, but you will get popular on V before A, even though you mostly I agree. talk about anime. <laughs> I agree. Well, V is closet A anyway, as we all That's know. That's true. That is very uh, true. But what I wanted to say, uh, just just uh, changing topic slightly, is that like this idea of like defining ourselves, like uh, the, 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 an adage comes to mind with this whole conversation that I, I don't know if it's an exact quote from someone, but it's it's like you are what you do often, at least to other people and to a large yeah. part to yourself as well. So like if you and confidence has so much to do with self identity. And like who we think right. we are, what we think we're capable of. So like if you, just like Digi and I, we you know, and I was saying before, like because we do this thing all the time, like but make podcasts or whatever, it is an a, basically an effortless thing to do, yeah. and uh, it can it's be so enjoyable effort, and whatnot. It's so effortless, and we're so confident that we drown out everyone else on the podcast. Yeah. And- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, unfortunately. Yeah, well, it's not. It's not effortless it's, for me. Let me tell you. It's it's <laughs> it's, uh, it's mostly because there isn't like a very clear f- a format structure for this. Like, are we talking about our yeah. experiences with confidence? Uh, we're just sort Whatever. of saying uh, things. If anybody wants to break in with anything, you go right ahead. Like, of derail course, us course. at your earliest convenience if you have an interesting <laughs> thought on confidence. <laughs> I mean, just be I, very I th- confident I think... that your idea will be funnier than ours. <laughs> well, it's interesting because my confidence level is basically zero. I'm like the mm. anti-confidence, and I mean, mm-hmm. I'm sure all of you guys are pretty well aware of that at this point. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm depressed, and I want to kill myself. Like that's me. Mm-hmm. That's my confidence mm-hmm. level, like negative seven. So, but, but why, Tom? Where does that stem from? You know, exactly? I don't. I don't know. I wish I knew. Mm-hmm. I. Th- I th- Think about it constantly. And the reason I wanted to be on this episode is because I wanted to get enlightened by your brilliant knowledge of how to not be I mean, me. Here's the interesting thing about about that. I always, growing up, thought I was a pretty uncharismatic person and a pretty pretty shy guy. And the time when I really mixed that up was after like I broke up with my college girlfriend, as I've talked about it at great length before. And then I went to Japan, and it was just a great time, and I had a lot of fun, and like I forcefully broke myself out of my shell. And during that time and afterward, like I, I, I did a lot of research about like the pickup community, which is just how I like channeled my energy and like learned about, I, I don't know, I learned about a life. I learned a lot about life, a lot about socialization, just a lot of things, uh, just through this vehicle that forced me to like go out and explore things. Because the only way to do this shit is to actually leave your house and, and fucking mix it up and see what happens. And like, uh, and that is like, when I stopped doing that, when I was just like home a, a couple years later after I finished my schooling, more or less, and uh, was just like at home, had no money, couldn't go out, couldn't like do anything, that all diminished, that all diminished greatly. But what, what it finally has taken the turn around the corner, and I'm, I'm, I'm seeing the light at the end of the tunnel here of this whole journey, is like becoming, I guess, an independent content creator at this point, and just like finding something that I really enjoy doing that seems like it's going to work out long term, probably. And just the, the sense of, of joy that gives me every day, knowing that I'm on a path that will emancipate me from my corporate slavehood and slavery, I guess, is the, is the correct noun there uh, for you grammar folks out there. And, uh, yeah, like, I... Enough. I, my, my confidence... <laughs> I feel like the majority of my confidence am, comes hey, from... Wait, wait, enough. I'm finishing my point. I'm finishing my last was, point. Okay, last was, sentence. It was a funny... Last sentence. Oh, fine. Okay, okay, make your funny joke. Okay. No, no, whatever. Oh, oh. I didn't realize you were cutting in for a goof. Uh, I was cutting my, in to say my pit, my bit, but if you really have to finish, then no, finish, go, please. Well, Do I was going to start a story. <laughs> I was going to start my little confidence. Your story, story is more well, interesting so you were than Nate. Just have the, the confidence to tell Nate to shut the fuck up and then just railroad. One what of us has say to. Let's okay, be real. fine. I'll do it after hippo. Okay, yes, Hippo. Go ahead with yours. Right, I don't my, care my, I, I have, um, like, confidence for me has always been, like, a problem. Like, I was a little shy mm-hmm. boy. I never really could talk to anyone. But I've had, like, small victories here and there in kind of pointless things that doesn't really, don't, don't really matter to everyone or anyone, but are, like, mm-hmm. relatable. And uh, one of those was, like, uh, I, I always used to look at my feet when I walked home from school and then I, I heard or realized that uh, only losers do that. Uh, you got to look up 
because everyone else is always looking up when I look up from my f m looking at my shoes. Yeah. Um, so I'm walking home and then I, <laughs> I decide, okay, I don't want to look at people, so I'm just going to do the opposite. I'm going to look up at the clouds, and I really like that. It's very strange, yeah. and, and like people are <laughs> like, Dude, oh, I... why, why is that guy looking up? But it's really nice, much nicer to look at than... You know, I even fucking do forward. that too, and it also gives me confidence. And for for <laughs> me, it was because. Quickly, sorry. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I usually look at the ground when I walk and identify money. So there we go. Hey, hey, there you good. go. Uh, <laughs> I actually do that because fucking the Mega Tokyo comic, the web comic Mega Tokyo. <laughs> oh my there was God, a part taking me back. There was yes. some real edgy dialogue at one point where there, there's this one like goth girl character, and she was like walking on telephone wires. And she was saying, like, someone was like, aren't you afraid somebody's going to see you? And she was like, oh, most people don't have the courage to look up or well. something like that. And, like, I was like, whoa, deep. So, like, I started, like, <laughs> always looking up because I had always looked at the ground when I walked. So I started looking up and, like, somehow just, like, seeing more of the world. And, like, it, it gives you more confidence specifically because the main reason I do look down is that I'm always worried I'm going to fucking trip over myself and eat shit. So I'm always kind of, like, watching where I walk. But when you're, like, deliberately not watching where you're walking, you're like, yeah, I'm, I fucking am capable of walking, dude. I'm a fucking badass. Like, <laughs> yeah. so, huge oh, yeah. But, yeah, that was, that was like, like, phase one of, like, my learning to walk cool. Um, and then uh, later I, I decided, you know what? I am going to look forward like a, like a, sh like a normal person, and I am not going to look away first. So whenever anybody glances at me, they always look away. And I was like, I was doing that for, for a very long time. I was like, yeah, yeah, I, I own this, this sight line, this, this horizon. This is mine. Get That's out, great. you know. You really you figured out how first. to walk from the ground up, which inspired the legendary Foo Fighters song that. Walk, based on Hippocrist's <laughs> legendary walk yeah. performance. I like that I want to say a thing. I like it too. Okay. There we go. How confident <laughs> of you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just wanted to do, sort of quickly address what, what Tom said about, like, the confidence and not figuring out why mm -hmm. he so com uh, lacks confidence. Like, I feel like I lack confidence, too, most of the time, though sometimes I feel like I have just enough of it just to function. But, like, uh, what I figured out, th these are just my musings. They're probably not the truths of the world, but, um, mm -hmm. like... That should be the tagline of this podcast, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Like, it would end um, a lot of our comment uh, wars that happen. <laughs> just clarified Indeed. that at the start of each episode. Yeah, it's just like uh, when you see other people be successful and do things, like you only see uh, what you know they want you to see because most of the people usually just share what they're good at, what they're confident about, uh, how they succeed in life. And but when you're with you, you you know, you spend most of the time with yourself. You get to see all your flaws, all your struggles, all all your down times, all your down moments. Like, mm -hmm. w imagine spending exact amount of time with another person. Wouldn't you start hating that person? Just like of seeing them in their worst as well as their best, mm -hmm. and uh, just like they're always on, there, and you just can't. Much. I totally are, agree. Are you saying something about the person you live with, Mage? Here is this a <laughs> no. this is a universal no. human is this a, constant. Is this a domestic no, uh, no, no, <laughs> complaint? No, no, no. I love him. I'm with great. you, Mage. I'm totally he's, with you on this. He's a great cash potato. I love him. <laughs> well, this is I why know. after Radcon, I hate all of you because we spent too much time. Together. I mean, kind of distance makes the heart grow true. fond, my dude. There's no doubt about it. It's just, yeah, and is is just like you live with yourself, and you end up like hating yourself. It's just something you kind of need to get over or just acknowledge. Well, also, I mean. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I, just quickly, um, because sure. you strive for success, a, a lot of people do strive for success and they feel like, you know, they're not doing enough, they're not getting enough. And uh, something I've uh, decided to think about, like, just accept that, like, not everyone is meant to have their name in the books, you know? Like, yeah. a lot of mm -hmm. thousands of hundreds, millions, billions of people die and no one will ever remember them even even the people who fought in the wars and stuff they're just a st statistic at, at best mm -hmm. and maybe i'm not meant to make the books you know and that's fine mm. you know i'm just gonna make the most of what i can with my little life that i have and then when mm -hmm. it's done it's done you see it's interesting the, it's yeah. interesting that you bring that up because i think about that all the time in this in this kind of back and forth I have mentally is that is that is that because there's people who uh vouch for either side like some people say like you have to make these big goals and never stop growing that's the most important thing and then there are mm -hmm. other people who say like uh 
carve out your niche that you're comfortable with and like, you know, do small things every time. And I'm always like, which is correct? Well, like as our, okay, here, here's my objective utilitarian standard. The oh, one that's correct, coming. the I was one that's ready. correct is, is it's the, the one that one, maximizes right? uh, human development. Like well, we need to calculate that and find it out. May, which we generally we works. know that everything is like, that's fine. Uh -huh. um, as your opinion, but it's not objectively better because, as we all know, this universe is gonna die one day, and none of it matters. Well, so, like, yeah. From that yeah. perspective, like human okay. growth, we is don't need nice, nihilism but... and utilitarianism <laughs> in the same podcast. No, oh, wait, but don't. but what I, I did want to make a point just about Tom's sentiment. Like I, I just wanted like, the reason I was like telling my story was because like there was a, there was a time in my life when I I like really tried to gain that kind of like raw confidence that I described before, and then like I kind of like gave up on that for a while due to circumstances. But whatever. Uh, and like and the, the stuff that I have now is like the second type of just based on like skill and just doing repetitive actions that like. like like yeah. when when I'm hanging out with Digi, like who's the one who calls the pizza man because the other's too much of a coward to speak to another man on the phone? Definitely Nate. It's it's me. It's me. You know, like uh, this is okay, a skill I, I've acquired. I, I am willing to call pizza guy, <laughs> but if anyone else will do it, then they can do it. Um, right. Name, <laughs> and also, there's the internet. Why are either so. of you picking up the phone when the internet yeah. exists at this point? What is wrong with both of you? We've had circumstances where we had to, but like, uh, <laughs> what I, I a nightmare! Think, what a yeah. nightmare! And then, like, um, talking to people on phones is like the worst. I used to, oh, I used yeah. to literally not be able to pick up my phone because it would just yeah, give me yeah. Many tell that, tell that to your dad who uh, the, fucking stormed Normandy on on D Day and fucking. <laughs> the funny thing about oh, what that a is, nightmare! Calling someone for ordering a fucking pizza, you fucking millennials! You make me goddamn sick to my I, stomach. I gotta say, one of the things that's kidding. made me kidding. more <laughs> confident over time is just like growing older and more impatient. Cause like I oh, yeah, I, that's I hate talking on the phone a whole lot, but one day I got so sick of me texting people and having to wait for their response that I was like, I'm just gonna call people every time, and now I do, and it just is so much fucking easier. Like mm -hmm. I don't like I kind of approach it with like an aggression. I think that's another way to, <laughs> to be confident. Actually, is to approach things. Like if you don't, if it's not something you feel confident in, just approach dude, it like you're fighting. Dude, like, that rule like, of aggression is exactly uh, what George Costanza uses. He's like when he's at his desk in Seinfeld. He's like, if you look annoyed, people assume you're busy. It's exactly yeah. the same law being applied here. I, 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 I got used to gotta... talking to people on phone out of necessity because I had to make a lot of phone calls to the doctor and stuff. So, yeah. but see, that's the thing, necessity. Like, you, it's just an action you had to do, and it probably increased. Well, yeah, you I know, mean, a lot your... of the time, a lot of the time, things really like talking it. to people on the phone isn't necessary, and for things like pizzas, yeah. it's kind of better to use the internet because there's less well, chance that it, they can it is hear a good something skill wrong to have we, we live it in the is world definitely a good skill to have yeah, and i yeah. can do it fine you know mm -hmm. when I, when I just, when a bank card sorry. like like fucking fails uh or, or something right, something right. where it's hard to get in in touch with them via their stupid internet crap yeah. i will <laughs> go and call the phone i was like all right you you, you better be fucking you're fucking you know. better at that than i am then because i still haven't called the irs and i've owed them a thousand dollars for like four months now and <laughs> I, just, I don't know why and i just need to call them and it's too much of a pain but like and then, i have gotten a lot better at it just by taking the approach of like get as angry as possible that you have to do this and that will be what like just do it in rage like do you it, know like, like if i have to call my mom because she won't fucking answer my texts then i just could be like motherfucker i'm calling you know like i, like, I, I always it's take funny that you mention that because i just i just i just finished watching the 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 netflix punisher series and there's a line in there he's just like mm -hmm. he like this guy he's with is like afraid to go do this like fucking mission with him and, uh -huh. and he says a, he says a line that pisses him off then he gets all upset and marches out and then he yeah. just is like huh, pissed off beats fear every time and like, yeah, yeah just like in terminator 3 when i learned that uh but it, it, it was interesting what you said digi about how like old people like get more of this like angry confidence you're saying and i, I think it's because the older you get the, the more time that you've spent alive on this planet, I think the more entitled you get to being alive and, you know, the more attached you get to uh, this corporeal I, existence. I, I you know, know what I, I mean? I, I, you know what I, I mean? kind of know what you mean, but I don't know yeah. whether you're saying it the right way. Like, they're, they're more entitled to the amount of knowledge that they've uh, amassed over their long mm. lifespan. It's like, th think so, about so, a baby. So people no, who need to I'm learn just, things are just, like, more think a, like, a baby, oh, God, a baby why didn't you know the, that already? A baby is the ultimate popcorn nihilist because it spent so little of its <laughs> time on, okay. alive as Hold opposed on. to dead, you know? You know what I'm talking about? Mate, I, I am not talking... Uh, I blame <laughs> this entirely on patience. It's a matter of okay. how many times in my life am I going to wait all day? Like, okay, that's that's okay. where it comes from for me. It's like, how many times in my life am I going to wait on somebody <laughs> to text me when, like, when that happens for the fifth time, I can't fucking take it anymore. 
Like sure, that's sure. where the aggression yeah, comes from it for really me. It really sucks for me because I have really good patience. <laughs> That I, does suck for you. My That's patience true. gets slimmer and slimmer like every day. And I mean, I, I, if I decide to be patient about something, I can be. Like if I, um, like if I know my girlfriend's like she works till five, right? And it's mm-hmm. like okay, uh, uh, she probably won't be home till six. I can very patiently like not go to eat until she gets home. Like that's fine. Mm-hmm. I know mm-hmm. I because I know the schedule. I know when I'm expecting the person to be there. It's right. different if it's like. I can't get a hold. Like, let's say you guys were trying to message me to come on the podcast today. Like, mm-hmm. um, you'll notice that uh, Nate, you've probably seen me do this. Like, I'm always the first to say, "Just call that motherfucker." Like, if uh, yes, like if are. Ben's late, I'll be like, "Call him," because it just resolves it so much faster. Like, you can sit there and text him. Absolutely. You can wait. Absolutely. You can be like, "Oh, I don't want to bother him." No, bother him. Like, that'll get him on the fucking podcast. You know. So like, mm-hmm. I just mm-hmm. uh, at some point in my life, I have to go like, "How many times am I gonna wait for the guy to show up?" You know, I couldn't agree more. No uh, more times than I have so far. Is I am. Answer. I have a kind of uh, tangential. Well, it's not really. T- it's just a different topic. Mm-hmm. Um, emails. I. <laughs> I have learned to to say fuck it when it comes to emails, especially yeah. like important ones, because. <laughs> um, it's 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 always like for me. It was always like oh they said hi. Uh, and then my name. Should I say hi as well, or should I mix it up and say hey? Or is that too yeah. informal? You know, like, <laughs> y- you think about, like, the, all the wrong things, like, you might, like, offend them, because you don't really know people who you're emailing. If, if they're on Skype, you know them yeah. a bit mm-hmm. better, if they're on Discord or whatever. If they're email, it's just sort of, like, a little bit more, like, oh, it's it's still kind of like letters. Like, I have to say uh, all the best, or, you know, best wishes at the end. Like, I don't know what... It, yeah. Fuck it. Just put it at... I don't care what I say. <laughs> Like, I don't have to look over it again, send, and then it's fine. It's always fine if you just send it before doing any adjustments. That's true. This podcast is really fascinating me because it's making me realize the way I deal with so many different scenarios. Because I get a sick, like, perverse joy out of sending, like, really curt, informal emails to, (laughs) like, 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 important shit. Like, yeah. people send me, like, like hi, uh, Conrad, you know, Collins or whatever, and then they, like, give, like, a three-paragraph thing and, like, a signature at the yeah, end, yeah. and it's, like, formatted, and I'll respond with, like, yeah, that's cool, send me the paperwork. <laughs> like, and, like, literally uh-huh. just one sentence, like, no introduction or anything of just, like, yeah, f- sure. You know, I've literally responded to, like, ad offers with, like, sure, sounds good, you know, and it's the and funniest you know, why, thing in the why world. not? Why not? Because <laughs> they don't I talk that care. way, too. Yeah, you know? exactly. They, they want you to advertise for them. They don't care what, how you respond to your fucking yeah. email, you know? Of course. Of course. It's really fun. I don't know. I, I guess they're I just I have no problem the... with, like, talking mm-hmm. on the phone or an email or anything like that. Mine's always in person. Because in person, I'm like, what do I do That's with this, a different like, flesh oh, yeah. puppet I'm in charge mm-hmm. of? Uh, I, 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 I've realized I am I'm much better... Um, on the internet than I am as Most a human people being. Are. That's mm-hmm. the stereotype. I, True, yeah. but like even in live things, like on podcasts and and stuff it, where I'm like um, basically am a real person, it's it talking one on one is very difficult. Yeah, like I For, still have trouble making eye contact when I'm talking to people. That's oh, yeah, I don't do that like ever. It I, feels I, really I never weird. make eye contact. I think it's weirder <laughs> to make eye contact unless it's I, like I, a really intense d- conversation. Eye contact and then is I how you s- stare right into their eyes. Exactly, eye contact is how you establish dominance. You break their fucking will I, beneath I, your I, powerful see, gaze. See, I, I was always like a really <laughs> shy boy, and I was always like, I, I, I really got to learn how to do all this stuff, but I was really mm-hmm. bad. At, you know, I never really tried that hard. But every sort of thing where it's like, you know, most people are like, oh, yeah, why would you even try that? Why would you look in someone's eye? Like, this is just weird. Yeah. I think of that as like, I uh, like gaining XP by the as the the, the longer totally, I look into totally. into the uh, in the the eyes of the other person, it's like I'm gaining XP and, and eventually I'll level up and it won't be a big deal anymore. Even though it's kind it's of true. unnecessary, but it's yeah. like yeah, I, I see all mean, those sort of things like it's, that. And it's because it's because staring in someone's maybe. eyes has been it was a biological sign of challenge between males, biologically speaking, <laughs> and it still retains that that instinct is biologically coded into us. To look someone in the eye indicates that you are like saying that I am your equal, I am, you know, it like it expresses confidence in a sort of challenging way. So to do that, you have to like sort of face the fire of of contacting this person's personality directly and saying I will not back down. And so it's kind of like sparring, you know, We're social almost, sparring. I was taught it's just yeah. rude to not make eye contact. So I try to make a little sure. bit Sure. by contact sure. every now and then like to indicate yes i am listening to you yeah. person i am paying attention oh that's also, the way to do it mm-hmm. uh, i think here's a little uh, like 
uh, thing about me. I, I'm not sure if you guys have it. Like, does anyone has this? Because I have this, and it's really annoying. Like, um, I look at people's mouths when they talk because if I don't see them talking, I have hard like I have trouble hearing them. Mm-hmm. Sometimes that's really weird. I think I've experienced that. Um, I hate man fucking watching like videos I do where it's me and some other person watching myself is a fucking nightmare because i oh. never look yeah. at, like i'm always like kind of half glancing at them and then looking away or looking into space and like you can see on my face that i'm like just preparing to say my next thing and not that's fully true. paying that's attention true. to what they're saying and i i fucking <laughs> hate watching myself on those but like i hate um, listening to myself <laughs> i've gotten so used to listening to myself i could never hate that no <laughs> doubt truly. no doubt um I wanted to talk about how I how I gained confidence, uh, mm-hmm. which it's it's interesting because how I gained confidence is something that also happened to Tom. So it's interesting that I gained it and he didn't. Yeah. Um, which was becoming Brony famous, and uh, and also oh I forgot I, I actually think I can probably you can tell a story, but I think I already have an answer of why it worked for you and not for me. And I, hmm, I also okay. skipped over this uh, this thing I was going to respond to something Hippo said about um, being easier to talk to people or harder to talk to people offline. For me, it all depends on if I have an in. Like, it's very easy for me to talk to people if there's any one thing that connects us. And if there's not, it's impossible. Like, if it's just someone in, like, a store or, like, someone around, like, even if I, like, really want to say something to them, I cannot unless they give me an in. Like, that's why it's I'm really social at, like, cons because I know those people know who I am, you know? So, like, it's really easy for me to, like, have in-depth conversations with random people at conventions as long as there's that in but um BronyCon 2013 was like a huge coming out of the shell moment for me because like I'd been someone who struggled with conversation my whole life I never really had many friends throughout all the school you know like I never really talked to anybody unless they talked to me first but Mm -hmm. like Going to that convention and having, like, literally 70 people come up to me and ask for, like, an autograph and then, like, speaking in front of a room of people, totally unscripted, unplanned, we were up all night, we'd been kicked out of our hotel, we were, like, dying, and, like, we get a fucking, like, we get, like, standing room only, thunderous applause, people telling us we did a great job, and I'm just, like... I mean, this is as raw as it gets. Like, this is... If you enjoyed me in, like, my purest, unfiltered form, then, like, I... You know, I know I can do it. Like, I know I can be... I know that I can be confident in myself because I know that even at my, like, lowest level of being able to put on a panel... Um, people still had fun at it, and, well, well, and people for still the sake enjoyed of our, my presence. You know? For the sake of our viewers there and, and people looking into the subject, would you say that it was more of an intellectual understanding that led you to that, or was it the visceral experience of having that happen? The visceral kind of just experience, like, for sure. It, like uh, Intellectually, I've always definitely. known that like confidence is... You know, like I, yep, I, I know yep. about the, the pickup artist stuff, where they're like, just go up to women and talk to them. And it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? The cold approach. That, you know? The cold approach is one of the most challenging things for any yeah. human being to do. And like, so, so, you know, I've never been someone who can walk up to other people and start a conversation. But so many people walked up to me and started a conversation at that convention, and yep. were and and nobody seemed to come away upset. Like nobody talked to me and was <laughs> like, "That guy's a piece of shit" or something. Yeah. Or like, <laughs> and I mean, I definitely have had tons of awkward interactions at conventions, especially at my first few where I was even more awkward. And people would come up to me and like say hi on like day three, and I'm dead tired and I have nothing to say. And they're like, "Hey, Digi, I really like your content." And I'm like, "Thanks." And then they kind of like linger, and I'm like. Uh, okay bye you know like yeah, yeah. now i've gotten into where i fucking stormed through a convention hall this was me at crunchyroll expo drunk the whole time storming through the halls like people come up dude you're digi bro and i'm like yeah bro and i give him a high five and i just keep going like you rock thanks for subscribing like you know you just gotta have that like swagger about it like like just that i mean that's pure confidence right there like just feeling like people are enjoying my presence and i only know that because I'm at this convention. People are confirming it. When I'm out and about, I feel like everyone is disgusted with me and, like, yeah, I don't belong yeah. anywhere I am. But, uh, but like, I've <laughs> through going to so many conventions, I have learned to really get over that a lot. Like, it used to be a huge problem. I'd go to Barnes & Noble in my fucking pajama pants and my fucking uh, robe, and I would feel like everyone here is looking at me and they all hate me and they're all disgusted. I used to always worry when I was on the manga aisle that if any, like, anime fans saw me there, they would think, like, oh, great. 
like, of course I'd find <laughs> this guy in the manga aisle. Like, this is, <laughs> this well, is what yeah. represents us anime fans. And now I go in there and I'm like, yeah, this is what represents you anime fans. You're a bunch of fucking losers. Like, just like me, you fucking ass. <laughs> like, I, I belong here. This is what you should all look like, you know? Um <laughs> So I've had that kind of reversal, and it's it's helped a lot, man. Like, that's why I go out so much. That's why I go out to eat all the time now. Like, it's really helped me to get out and, and enjoy life a lot more, to, like, not constantly feel like I'm fucking don't belong anywhere I am, you know, which I used to constantly feel. I think it's, you... It's, it's weird, because... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My bro, like, I guess it was because I wasn't hosting my own panel at BronyCon when I went, but, like, every interaction I had was awkward, and I felt, like, yeah. less confident because I performed badly in the podcast. I, I, like, I remember swearing accidentally, and I was like, oh, shit, I've Oh, that was funny. That was, we all like it that. Was, it, it, I, I guess it was funny, but I, I don't remember saying much of, yeah, like, yeah. stuff. I mean, it's and then, definitely... And then afterwards, people came up to everyone. I was like, you know, a few people came up to me and said, cool, and I was like, yeah. I would say it was very different between those, because, like, the, the BronyCon 2013 experience, like, um... No one had known who I was before that. Like, it was, I was brand Mm -hmm. new. I had just taken off. Like, I had never thought that I would be big. None of the other famous people knew who I was. I was just hanging out with Tom and kind of like, he knew a lot of brony famous people. So I was following him around and meeting all these people. None of them knew who I was. And like, so for me, it was that very individual experience. It was like just me. It wasn't, nobody was coming up to me because they saw the horseshoe crew. You know, they were coming up to me because they saw me. And I think for right, for right. you, you know, by the time it was BronyCon number three and you're just kind of in with the pack and, like, there's less of that, like, personal, you know, expedition that would make it like that, you know, which is it's unfortunate in a way. Um, like, I think you could have had that if you had been walking around on your own more. Like, maybe more people would have come up to just you and wanted to just be like, oh, you're maybe. my favorite It's guy. just a numbers I, game, I, you know? Like this, um yeah I, I I feel like if I had been at at BronyCon by myself, um it would have been it, it would have forced me like if I had because wa- I didn't want to walk around by myself because of all right. of you that were there and I was like I don't know anything about anything and I, mm-hmm. I, I I'm gonna die. It was so, the first time um, in America. Too. First time yeah. in America as well. So I have to I I I wanted to stay tethered to at least one person from the group. Yeah. But of course. If I'm with someone else, it's like there's a reason for me to not go out on my own. And if I was on my yeah. own, and somebody mm-hmm. talked to me. It might have been good. That I don't a, know. I, and, it's it's and difficult. That also, that also contributed. Like that was far from my first convention. And all the cons I'd gone to before, I went with my older cousin, and like usually hung out with him the whole time, or hung out with Victor. Like that was the first con where like Victor and Shade were there, but they were just kind of like tag alongs to me. And it was like, it was really my, like I was the guy leading the pack, you know? And it's definitely mm-hmm. a yeah, different yeah. feeling when you're like the one making all the decisions. You're the one saying like, Hey, let's go to this restaurant. Hey, let's go here. Like that builds the confidence as well. And if you're always putting yourself, I mean, it's, it's basically alpha, you know, like if you're putting yourself in an alpha position, it gives you more confidence because you, you kind of see yourself doing it. You see yourself, of, like having made a plan and executed it and you go I can do that you know I don't need to follow my cousin who's older than me like I can do it myself and yeah all that's a big so much of this too. just comes from performing the actions like you said you perform it you, you recognize in yourself you identify like as someone who can do these things and then when like a situation comes up in a similar way later on you just look back at your experience and say I have done this maybe you've done it many times it, it I, all builds up and you just feel you know empowered that there have been times when I've like been able to just walk around in a city by myself and look at stuff. Mm-hmm. Like there was this one time uh, in college, uh, we had like a trip to to Florence in Italy, and it was like um, you That's know cool. we're supposed to go ground or go around and draw uh, uh, stuff in the in the fucking art galleries and shit. Hmm. Hmm. Um, and uh, uh, in between, uh, please like, the draw sessions. on the Mona Lisa. That would be uh, excellent. <laughs> please, thank it's you. Not even fucking there, you idiot. Oh uh, no. <laughs> uh, but um, in between, you know, it was it was like the first time where it's like a school trip, but n- you don't have to stay with the pack in between, like stuff like lunchtime. Mm-hmm. Hey, you can just go uh, meet here, back here at this time. It's like, oh yeah, I can just go. And I didn't really have any friends in that class that mm-hmm. I wanted to stick around with, so I just ended up wandering the city streets and looking at stuff, and I bought a vinyl record, and, and, and it was cool. Whoa, yeah. sick. And I ate, and I, ate <clears throat> and I went into a restaurant and ordered I... pasta and sat by myself and ate it, and I left, and I didn't yeah. leave a tip, because fuck Hippo. that shit. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hippo, I think you and I, like, view this stuff in a very similar way. Like, with the EXP meter kind of thing. Like, it very much is like, yeah, you're just working until you level up and it's less of a problem. And I definitely, like, try to put myself in situations where I will have to be confident to succeed. And the biggest one for me was this fucking year taking a trip around the country. And that was, like, a huge leap. Because I was a guy who was, like, afraid mm-hmm. to drive. Like, I would never t- dr- drove on the interstate for, like, years. I just drove in, like, I was so afraid of getting into accidents. I had no confidence in myself as a driver. I hated long-distance trips. And it was only because I was literally forced to take the drive to Atlanta when me and Ben and DeVue went. Because Victor was supposed to do it, but he ended up having work. And, like, because I had to do it, and, like, I experienced it and realized it was not that bad. Like, it was a nine-hour drive, but, which sounds fucking insane, but, like, I did it, and it was fine. And I was like, oh, Like, this has totally changed my perspective on road tripping, on traveling and everything. And so I was like, I could do this all the time. And so, like, I spent two months over the summer just driving to people's houses and hanging out. And it really broadened my perspective on, like, the world. Like, I don't feel constrained to any place anymore. Like, I don't feel like a guy who lives in a town. Yeah, because you've done it. It's part of your world experience now. Been all over, Mm -hmm. you know. I want to share a story. (laughs) Go okay, ahead. go for it, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's just a quick story about me being a social weenie. This was like seven or so <laughs> years ago, so I'm, I, I hope I'm better than that. Uh, but yeah, so uh, back when I was still in college, uh, there used to be like this uh, shop that sold like re- really cool like game-related things like um, cards and stuff and like uh, tabletop games and stuff. And they also sold plushies of whatever was popular. And, it just so happened they were selling, like, Pokemon plushies. It was, like, Snivy, Tepig, and Oshawott, the fuck Oshawott. And um, I really... Hey, I'm sorry. Hey! <laughs> hey. <laughs> do, do you say uh, Auschwitz? Auschwitz? Oshawott. Is that... Oshawott. Uh, Oshawott's well, that's like much more disappointing than Ragnarok. Oshawott's <laughs> <are> the <laughs> Auschwitz Pokemon. Yeah, okay. It can't on, be please. Auschwitz, because that's the water type. <laughs> it can be a fire type. Uh, or a poison them. type. But anywho, anywho, so like, they were selling those uh, fleshies, and I really wanted to, uh, to get them. However, the problem was that the, the store was actually really, really small, and like uh, there was a table in, in the very middle of the, of the, small, uh, of the store, and there mm-hmm. were always people playing some sort of game there. And me, being mm. the little scaredy mage I was, I didn't want to go in because as soon as you go in, everyone's immediately going to look up at you. And I didn't want people looking at me just yeah. trying to browse games and stuff. And mm-hmm. so, but I really wanted the plushies. So I ended up circling that store like several days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I think on Wednesday, like, and they this. were always pl- there playing the game, and I was like, well, I need to go into the store, but there's always people there playing those darn games. Uh, yeah. So I decided, okay, n- tomorrow, tomorrow, no matter what, I'm going to go in and get those damn plushies and never going to come back if I don't need to. Yeah. And, okay, so I came back the next day, and just so you have it, they had some sort of, like, meeting or convention and whatever. Like, the, the place was fucking packed. There were oh, so many no. people. It's usually, like, three or four people. Well, that's like kind of good, though. You can get lost in the crowd yeah, that yeah. way. Yeah, well, yeah. Right. Kind of. Like, I thought, yeah, okay, 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 don't panic. No one's going <laughs> to notice you. Just slip in, get the plushies, pay for them, and Nate, slip you're out. forgetting the crucial part here, though. Mage is a girl in a game store. Oh, <laughs> no! <laughs> no, there were actually a few girls. I think they were, like, Oh, thank God. Stuff. Decoy. Boys, you're safe. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, like so I walked into the store, I got the plushies, and I go to the counter, and lucky me, there's no one tending the counter. So I had to I had to wait. I had to stand there and wait until someone uh, like goes up like they I I don't know who the cashier was, so I had to wait for them and while while I was waiting someone noticed me and they were like, Hey, are you waiting to buy something? And I'm like, Yeah and then they yelled loudly, Hey, whatever your face is, there's a customer and then everyone looked at me. Oh, Every single no. one <laughs> That's the worst possible. I know. Oh. <laughs> See, oh that's God. why competency sports you can plushies. deal with these. It, right, yeah. right, okay. Well, okay. I, I mean, got the that, plushies, though. That story is so it. prescient to me because, and this is also a part of what I was saying before about like just getting like impatient and fed up because, like that exact scenario, aside from the twist ending, like 
has happened to me so many times growing up where I wouldn't, like, there's so many things I wanted to buy and didn't just because I felt uncomfortable in the place. Like, Mm -hmm. I didn't want to walk over to that side of the store because there were too many people over there, oftentimes playing a game like you described, and, like, or just the shop owner seemed... (laughs) Like, like they wouldn't want me there or something yeah. like that. It's just all kinds of shit. There's so many excuses I came up with like, like that. And then at some point I got so sick of never getting what I wanted that like, yeah. I was like, I just have to, like, I don't even care if they think I'm a fucking mongoloid. Like I got to get the shit I need to get because how many times am I going to go through going to, cause I go to stores all the time and I feel uncomfortable all the time. So I mean, just like, yeah, that's I totally feel, a thing yeah. when like, when you hit the wall, it, honestly, I, this is kind of like arbitrary. Cause like, I, I don't believe in free will and all this stuff. I don't really think any of us like make our, we're just, we're slaves to the machinery of all our right, brains. Uh, who cares Wait, about no, what listen, you're saying? Listen, here, here's the point <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get talk at. about uh, this, this, this really cool moment that's happened. <laughs> Uh, no, or actually, no, I had a thing about shops. Uh, fuck this idea that you have to be nice to the shop cashier. It's impossible, and I've never been able to do it. I, I can't say, <laughs> hello, how are you doing? I can't say, uh, I, they, you know, something about me, I guess, they, they frown. They just frown at me like, like I'm supposed to... They just hate to... their lives, dude. Yeah. I mean, it's not That's, even that. I've been like, a cashier, it's the worst. Me, like, the, the, yeah. the person who comes before me says... You know, they they don't say anything, but then the person smiles and says, "Hello, how are you doing?" And they say, "Oh, it's great. It's, I'm I'm gonna give you my life story, ha <laughs> credit card yeah. beep." And then I come up to them and they just don't say anything. I'm like, "Why don't you say hello to me? Do I have to do it? Do you? Am I scary? What what what, what am I doing wrong? Fuck the, you!" The and answer, I kill them. I the punch them right yes. through the throat. <laughs> <laughs> The same thing uh, happens to me, and the answer is yes, you're scary. I think that's what it is for me anyway, because, like, it's, I experience that, and I, I'm like, I just uh, I just look like I don't want to be here, and I look like I want to kill It's funny you mention never talking to cashiers, because one of the things I do sometimes to try and, like, build confidence is, like, talk to cashiers. Because, like, we have this whole, like, ritual of, like, mm-hmm. hey, how you, like, you know, how are you doing? And, like, fine, how are you? Good. Like, that's just how, like, the beginning of the interaction goes. Sometimes when I'm trying to, like, do something more confident, I'll, I'll, I'll deviate from the script and see what happens. Because I remember I was, I went, to, That's really good. <laughs> I went to, uh, to, to the cashier and I just, I just bought some, like some drinks or something. And they're like, Hey, how you doing? I'm like, Oh, I'm kind of tired. Yeah. And they told oh, me they didn't know what do? to do. And it turned yeah, into a yeah. conversation. We just had a conversation for like oh, so five minutes as they checked me out. And then like, I was like, all right, there you go. I feel and, like when... I'm so glad you feel that way. And I feel the opposite of how most people do. Cause like when a cashier asks me a follow up question, I get excited. Cause I'm like, Oh, <laughs> human interaction. And like most of the people I know complain, like we'll leave the store and they'll be like, why the fuck did they ask me so many questions? And I'm like, no nah, man, I just want to know someone cares about me. They've, they've, <laughs> I, I don't they've yeah. literally been the substitute questions. for just... a robot arm that entire day. Cause yeah. they're just yeah. grabbing your stuff yeah. and running it across a scanner. It's, they're just when, as desperate for an actual genuine interaction as you oh, are at that yeah. point. True. When, when True, I you got to reach out. When like, I was startled by how mm-hmm. everyone was nice and polite. Like, I walked into the mm-hmm. store mm-hmm. one. Like, this is, like, the very first times I, I, I was, like, with my mom. We were walking, and we walked into a store, and, and the cashier, like, we weren't even by the register yet. We were just browsing around, and the cashier was like, hi, hello, welcome to the store. And, was like, and I'm, like, internally, like, holy shit. <laughs> <They're talking laughs> you know me. what? I, uh, Mage, I'm just curious about this. Was uh, uh, Lithuania part of the Eastern Bloc? Was it part of the Soviet yeah. Union? Yeah. It was. So was it a yeah. communist state under that under that government, under that rule? Uh, I, Do you know? I, I'm just curious because because it, it seems to me that communism in general seems to like make it so that those like like every person working in a communist state isn't working for themselves. So like every customer becomes a burden and an annoyance as opposed to in capitalism when like a customer that's where like the customer is always right thing comes in and like you have to be nice to them. Or I'd like you you want to because they're the point. people who help you make your money. Canyons are yeah. rude. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I'm just just wondering if it had anything to do with well, that. Like, oh yeah, they were part of the uh, USSR and stuff, but not okay. Anymore. Well, uh, perhaps after, perhaps like... that's relevant. But uh, I, I was gonna say uh, ab- ab- about uh, the the. Oh God, I totally blanked. God, what the this fuck is, was I gonna this say? This is slightly oh, shit. This, this is less about confidence, story. but like, do any of you guys like? Yeah sort of slowly start to view like store clerks and stuff as like characters in your like like people or or you develop like some kind of weird connection like unspoken oh. connection to them oh 
Oh, oh, okay, hold on quickly. Sorry to cut you off. That reminds me quickly. Um, so like uh, when I go shopping for food and stuff, uh, actually me, me and my boyfriend, we use the, the self checkout thing. However, yeah. it's like a female voice. And like, um, hmm. I hmm. named her Clara because like, you know, you clear the <laughs> items, Clara. And, <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. And like, and like, <laughs> when she, when this she's is the depressing is like... version of what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Claire, no, Claire is fun. great because she never judges fun. me when I buy Doritos and marshmallows yeah. and shit. No, no, you know? no, we have fun though. Like me and my boyfriend, like <laughs> when she says, "Like please, please pick up items," me and my boyfriend go, "Like no, shut up, Claire." <laughs> <laughs> I'm, wow. Everyone okay. in this call, aside from Mage, will have been to the Wawa by my house. Yes, and I yes. went there like every day, often several times a day. So like I knew. Like, I don't know any of them, but I know everyone who works there. Like, I know who, like, I've seen them enough right. times. Right. Right. And, like, because I would usually go at, like, four in the morning, there's this one, this sweet little old black lady who worked there every fucking morning. Like, she worked the graveyard. She was, like, the, the night shift manager, I think. And, like, so when I went to, to check out, it was always her. And, like, she obviously recognizes me, you know? Like, we don't have many interactions, but, like, if mm -hmm, I suddenly mm -hmm. trim my whole fucking beard off after mm -hmm. a year of growing it, she might be like, oh, you lost the beard. And I'll be like, yeah, you know? And I, f I don't know. Even though our interactions were that limited, I felt, like, really connected to her to the point that I was, like, really sad to leave that Wawa. Like, that was the yeah, one thing yeah. I felt like I was going to miss in Virginia <laughs> Beach. It's like, man, all these Wawa guys are not going to know why. I, I, I thought about saying something. I thought about saying That's... to one of them, like, hey, I'm going to be moving <laughs> soon. Like, you won't see me anymore, just in no. case. You should have done wonders. that. That would have been, like, a total huge it, XP boost for that. It would have like, yeah. a whole other level. I didn't have the confidence to think that they would I, know who I, I was enough to give enough. a fuck. That'd be I, so I, funny, dude. Wouldn't that be hilarious if you went in there and be like, oh, I just want to let you know, like, I'm, I'm moving. I've I'm not always be loved here you. Anymore. I've and, always loved you. And they're going to be like, you. who the fuck are you? Send yeah. them a yeah. letter. <laughs> I, Dearest beloved Wawa. Well, I'm always, <laughs> because the way my mind works is that if, if, for instance, one of them had stopped showing up one day, I would assume they were dead. So, uh, <laughs> so I, just, right. I just don't want them to think I'm dead. Like, you I, know, I, like, I don't blame I, you, dude. I, I yeah. would probably like think the same things uh, yeah. in your situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to to to, to me, to like, I, I, I can't um I can't really understand that because I don't think I've seen like I think of cashiers as like procedurally generated. I don't think I've seen a cashier <laughs> twice. Like they just are. I mean, like, really? Because I, I don't go into you the same store. I went that into that times. Wawa literally every day for like six years. So like yeah. that's why you like, it took that much that before I started recognizing like, them like consistently. Okay, so, so sometimes when when Clara's being a bitch, we we, <laughs> we have <laughs> we have a uh, we have like. <laughs> <laughs> Claire's so being a bitch. <laughs> Not Claire my shit. We need we need extra help and like um, uh, this one time I think three or four days in a row she was being a bitch so we needed extra help and it was always the same lady and it was like in the dead of night like I don't know two to three a.m. and it was it's kind of fun though like see, seeing her like come up and it's like oh hey it's you guys again and like yeah we're having troubles Claire's being yeah. a bitch. <laughs> Dude. Uh... When th there's this girl at my Kroger, at my local Kroger, that we have kind of, me and my girlfriend have developed a kind of narrative about, and it was it was fascinating because one day I've seen this girl a couple times. We were we were there checking out, just buying some food or whatever, and like we needed her to come over and scan something, and like she 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 did it for us, and I was like, oh thanks, no response. She like does her like scanning thing. Uh, she just and I'm like, yeah, sorry sorry for the you know make you do this. No response, N not a, not a word. And like she turns to face me. She does not make eye contact, of course. And like the the unbelievable, exaggerated, cartoonish like frown upon her face. The biggest I've ever seen in my life. Just just it, making me imagine. You know like that 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 uh, that Homestuck panel I linked to my Twitter earlier today. Mm -hmm. Like the incredibly yeah. massive frowns. Oh. It looked exactly <laughs> like that. I have never seen a frown of that magnitude. And like I was like, oh my god, what what is her story? What brought her to this lowly point in her life? 
to be like just so de desperate and and sad. I mean, there's nothing wrong with her working at Kroger, but like the sadness as she fucking performs her mundane tasks here at her job, just incredibly depressing. Uh, but then, but then we, I, we happened to go back the other day and we we saw her again, and she helped us in that exact same way. Only this time, she was like a thousand times more like cheery. And I'm like, what did she? Maybe did it like her boyfriend break up with her on that day? Like, what what's the story here? Did, did her she get evicted on that day? What is the narrative here? I really <laughs> dying to she, know. She, she, she has binary emotions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> happy and sad. Uh, but, but by the way, though, uh, I did want to uh, share another little anecdote here, and it's just that people think that I'm really confident, but but I really want to really want to like stick to this thing that like people are confident at what they do a lot, and like I argue and yell about stuff on the internet a lot, so I'm I'm pretty good at that. But w at my job, at my at my much discussed uh, programming job, when I'm walking up to the coffee maker and I see people standing around there who I don't know specifically, and even if I do know them, I. And it is quite common to see me do a 360 degree turn and walk the fuck away. You just, just turn like, back right to face them again, you moron. Uh, that's the joke, you fool. I anticipated that and I've outsmarted you again. Uh, yeah, like I will literally do an about face and just like walk and pretend that I never wanted that coffee <laughs> anyway. And no, no, thank you, sir. I've got other oh, things to I've do. I've been there. Just to avoid like having to make conversation with these people that I have no interest in. And also, I'm always worried at my job that I'm like not doing good enough, that I'm not meeting the expectation. Which is completely different from like my like my YouTube style work, where I know I'm on top of things, I care, I give a shit, I'm interested in doing it, uh, as opposed to uh, that that job where I don't give a fuck and want to get away, ideally with as little work as possible, and you know make everybody happy and whatnot. But I just want to do my work and get the fuck out of there, so I can come home and do I, this shit, you know. Um, I I have a thing that I'm not sure whether people also feel this way, so I'll be interested mm. to know if you guys have felt this way. Um, I I. Especially like in school when it's like, um, you know, encouragement to, to get involved. I hate it when I'm shy and I'm trying to think, okay, I've got to, I've got to psych myself up to do this thing, or I, uh, maybe I should put my hand up, or, or maybe I should do this thing, and, and then somebody notices or assumes that I'm having trouble and they sort of slyly, like, create an opportunity for me, and, I, and then I suddenly don't want to do it. Because they've just sort of like, you know, so what about you? What do you think? And I'm like, ah, I was, I was, I was thinking like that ten minutes of how I should, like I want to do it. I want to be the guy who 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 does the the confident thing. I don't need your help. And now I don't, I, you know, I don't know. It's sort of like a like a, a a nagging mother thing, sort of. Like now that you've told me to do something, I'm not going. I to. I know exactly how you oh, feel. Yep. They're trying to be nice and considerate. And I, I I appreciate it, especially like on this podcast when it used to happen. Um, but <laughs> a lot of the time, it's just sort of like, uh, you know, you it, know it gets me happens? flustered because I wasn't thinking, I, yeah. I wasn't expecting people, that, and I was trying to think when to come it's in. It's like when they assume that you have something to say and you don't actually, and then they uh, make that, you know, pause and draw attention uh, to you, and I'm like, no. That's when you can meme, though. That's when your meme potential is at its peak, <laughs> and you got to be ready to spring a choice meme that you've been cultivating. A uh, that's spontaneously meme. You gotta, you gotta work on that, mate. Practice That's what we're perfect. counting on you for. <laughs> <laughs> yes, me, the, the master. Uh, Tom, were you making a point there? Were you, were you um, trying to say something? Mm -hmm. I've been trying to like sneak in a point <laughs> for some time, so I guess well, I got, okay. I got two things. First, I wanted to go back and say like why I think Digi was able to cultivate his confidence, and oh, I was yes. not. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I think I think it goes back to what you were saying a little bit too, Nate, about how was it the fact that in your ship he was the top and you were the bottom? Was that the issue for you? Uh, I'm just wondering. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I was always the bottom. He was. I, I bottom. think that's actually true. I think that's actually he was. He true. was always bottom for some reason. Maybe it was the funny. cognitive dissonance for you of not identifying <laughs> as a top. I, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> it shattered your self-perception. Okay, I'm sorry. Please. <laughs> no, please I on. think the the reason that that didn't give me the confidence that it gave Digi is be mm -hmm. it goes back to what you were saying earlier about how you you gain confidence by becoming uh, financially and like critically successful at something you wanted to do, and yeah. Digi did too. I never wanted to do YouTube. It's something I just fell into. That's oh true. right, so that's I right. So I was I was succeeding at a facade oh, as opposed yeah. to something mm -hmm. I actually wanted to do. And like the actual like that's thing how that I feel I've about like my do, job, like my corporate job. I like right. don't care, and it doesn't give me any confidence to do. And that's yeah, why okay. that always felt like a job to me. And the thing that I've right. wanted to do all my life, I've never been able to do or succeed at. I, I hear where you're coming from, dude. That's a good point. And like, 
it's interesting because like I don't know how to like segue into this like nicely, but I mm. I'm just gonna go for it. Is that uh, being part of the PCP definitely hurts my confidence, like for what? sure. Yeah. How is that possible? We've because talked it, about that a lot. Because it uh, gives you yeah. it gives you a, a measurable structure, like a social structure, and I'm at oh. the bottom of that. I make the least amount of money. I have the least amount of fans at this point in terms of people who actually care about my contributions. It, so it hmm. gives you like a measuring stick, it's and it gives you a very concrete some, surrounding of people. In some ways, I'm not making that much money either. But you do have a lot of subs though, so that's something. That's nice. You got you got the views, Mage. You got then them again, Tom views. Tom a big channel we too. Mage technically subs, has though. like way less subs than Tom, right? Tom has got like no. 56k or something. No, Mage, Mage has like 55 I... or 56 or something. Oh. 56, yeah. yeah, it's Tom's those animation PC. things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, um, that's interesting. That is definitely an interesting point, and you're. I, think, yeah, I, I, think I see where you're close. coming from. I <laughs> think that's it's what, funny that's though. That's why our stickers are like linked. We're both the bot. I mean, you got you you make you've got more. Well, I was going to say you got more money in subs than Munchie, but he's like 16, so it's probably not a huge confidence boost. He, he's right, in a different yeah. category. He's in the kitty PCP pool at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Munchie's the Weenie Hut Juniors of the yeah, PCP. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. He's got more subs than money than, like, Devu and Hippo. Well, not maybe not more money than Hippo, but I don't know. Well, I don't know. Hippo, we don't do you, we don't actually discuss, like, our finances I don't need to bring really that out, anything. but, like, I, no. I think it's interesting that you focus on those things as opposed to, uh, I mean... You also are the. I think the real problem is that you are the unhappiest in the PCP, more so than the actual. Well, but, stats. but why is he the like? If Tom was making money and like Would was able to make, do what he wanted, like he'd um, probably be happier. Sure. If he was know. able to do what he wanted and make money, I think the problem because it, it wasn't always the case that Tom was making the least money and had the least subs. Like that mm -hmm. was not the case when the Horseshoe Crew was a thing. Certainly, right. He was the That's second true. biggest of us, but it, it wasn't doing something he wanted to do. You know, right. right. So That's it's. The issue. Yeah, it's more, I think it's more a problem of like, like if I had all these subs and all this money and I was like, man, I fucking hate YouTube, then you probably wouldn't be as like, you know, like as readily going like, oh man, I wish I was like, had had the confidence Digi has, like, you know. Yeah. It, I mean, you've got a guy, for example, you, you've got a guy like Jesse, for example, who like has said many times his, his great frustrations with YouTube and his hatred of the platform. But yeah. like he's a man who was already someone who would beat up like a 15 year old in the movie theater. So like he's right. he already <laughs> had his shit, you know, worked out on, yeah, and, on this front. And also with Jesse, it's just that I feel like all of us are kind of so in awe of his talent, like regardless of whether he's successful, we would still kind of look up to him, you know. Uh, in certain, in some ways, absolutely. That, like for me, true. The, despite the fact that I'm more successful than him, like I will always view him as a better content creator than me because I just think he's better. You know, like so. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. even if even if I'm the person who seems like oh, obviously he's the enviable one. He's got all the money and uh, and all the all the fans. Like to me, I still like envy the talent that Jesse has. Well, you, you know, know, like I I, I I in no may in no way mean to like diminish your experience, your your opinions on this at all, Tom. But like I very much felt like when I restarted Best Guy Ever. Um, I, I don't know if the PCP actually exists. That happened like a little bit later, I think, that we made the PCP. But like yeah. doing that obviously was very difficult for me. Uh, like I knew that I, I kind of needed to do it if I wanted to like go on and m make content. And like I remember, I think about this sometimes, I, I, I was really keeping in mind Digi's phrase of like, man, when you've got 2,000 subs, you're doing something very right. That, that stuck with me over the years for some reason. Yeah. I don't know why. But in any case, like I... Uh uh, oh, just yeah, real quick. if you want to cut in, yeah, uh, yeah, uh -huh. to to talk about like why I got so much confidence so early doing this is because mm -hmm. I was failing at this for seven fucking years, right? You know, like, right. and that's the part I think a lot of people forget because like I didn't start as a YouTuber, I started as an anime blogger, and my anime blogger was n my anime blog was never popular, like not mm -hmm. even among mm -hmm. the standards of anime blogs at a time when that was a thing you could <laughs> succeed at, you know, like, mm -hmm. and um, a big part of that is because I was fucking. You know, I started it when I was 15. Like, I was young as fuck doing a lot of this. I have eight, like, I've matured greatly as a writer, but, like, all that time I was taking it just as seriously. Like, I was still, like, the amount of failure that someone who's, like, 26 feels when they've been doing it for two years and they haven't had any success, I still felt that way when I was 17 and, and, and not having any success. Obviously, there's a, a right, magnitude right. of difference if it's if you're older and you see younger people doing it, that affects it as well, you know? That also, like, can hurt your confidence even more. But, yeah. like, there was a seven-year period where I thought no one will ever read my shit because it's too weird. 
Like, I don't write mainstream enough stuff. I don't approach mm-hmm. things in a mainstream enough way that people will ever watch my content. And so for me, and I've said this before, like, I literally got 200 views on my first Brony video, and that was enough to make me, like, this is the future. Like, two, because 200 views was greater than I'd ever had on anything, <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's so, great. Like, to me, 200 views is like this insane amount, and now people look at that like it's literally nothing. Like people are like, "Oh, if you got less," but like, people look at like a thousand views like it's nothing, and I'm like, "Nah, dude! Like 2,000 views is better than the whole first seven years of my writing career." You know, like that's a fucking 2, full views, gigantic auditorium or something. You know, if yeah. you think about it in those terms. Yeah, exactly. It's a fucking lot of people, and like, so for me, when I saw 200, I went like, "Oh, this is the future!" Like, oh, imagine if I could get a thousand. Oh my god! Like, and I didn't realize how hard. <laughs> it was to actually like make money through ad revenue like i right right i think that a lot of smaller channels who i thought were making money off of it weren't like Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh and then i later learned like oh you got to be a lot bigger than i thought to like for this to be profitable but luckily i you know caught a windfall at like the like right at the moment that it was a good idea to be on youtube is when i got on you know so it's like very lucky but um you know for me, it was just such a huge confidence boost to have even a modicum of success after all the failure I'd had. That uh, th- that also helped me. That's an know, interesting point. With mm-hmm. with regards to like comparing yourself to to other members of the procrastinators, like I understand, like it, like I, th- there's elements of every procrastinator that I envy. You know, like like I Devu Devu's like like mind brain. And then and then Munchie's like think brain. It's like, like, Whoa. Two t- completely different types of like weird brain that I wish I had like the ability. I, I know to replicate. exactly what you mean. I envy Munchie's radicalism, like his, ab- yeah. his ability his to just fucking Islam. go for it. And you can't, like I can't do that. I can't just scream in public. And I wish I could because I admire that. You know. Yeah. So so it's like um like I I know. Uh, it's 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 weird because I have like struggled with like comparing myself to people who are better or younger and better or younger and the same, uh, mm-hmm. in in skill level and feeling like oh man, fuck, um, but I I think I'd gotten over it at some point and I don't know how and I don't know why. I mean, it's really important to be proportional and like keep perspective about these things because like you know it'd be it considering we live in this world where we have contact with like literally every person on like Twitter like you can actually talk to like. I don't know, fucking Donald Trump, president of America, if you want to. You can message the man. But, like, uh, you can compare yourself in terms of, like, a 15-year-old kid, a a 15-year-old, like, 90-pound soaking wet baby weakling could, like, say, like, oh, man, what the fuck am I doing? Uh, Arnold's up there, like a 300-pound golden god. What the fuck am I doing down here? When it's like, well, of course you're not that guy. You haven't put in, like, 20 years lifting. There's only one of that guy in the fucking world, too. Yeah. Like, lately I've been... um... I've been getting over that in a big way, like, because it used to bother me back when I was, like, 23 that, like, a lot of the rappers I liked were, like, my mm. age or younger, and I was like, right, how can they right. be so much more talented than me? Um, and then, like, right now, I've gotten really into Post Malone because uh, mm-hmm. he's uh, he, he's got a couple of really great songs, and he's also on the H3 podcast all the time because he's good yeah. friends with Ethan, and I'm fucking obsessed with that podcast right now. Um, but Post Malone's 21. He's got, like, three mega hits now he's rich he's as 21 fuck. now yeah, wow Post Malone okay. is currently 21 Jeez. got three mega big hits he's uh you know he's a mainstream success i hear him on the fucking radio every day so because i listen to the radio <laughs> for some reason and um <laughs> and i watch him on hd podcast and i get really excited because he's like he seems like a really interesting smart dude and i can look at him and say okay the amount of shit he did by the time he was 21 like he just was doing better than me. Like he was putting on, sh- like mm-hmm, he was part mm-hmm. of a metal band that was doing shows back when he was in high school. He was putting together internet videos. He had like people he worked with. He just put more effort into his craft than I did by the time he was twenty one. And yeah. like he's the yeah. kind of guy who like yeah, there's obviously a huge element of luck. Like he just happened to get like a song retweeted by the right people, and he had the right connections, and he blew up on SoundCloud. And like there's a lot of luck involved. But that dude 
was better at what he was doing by the time he's 21 because he was smarter at 21 than I was. Like, I listen to this dude talk, and I go, I couldn't have said that when I was fucking 21. Like, I'm just not as good as, like, and that's that's normal. Like, of course, in this insanely vast world, there's going to be a hell of a lot of people who were better at 21 than you were. Just be right. proud of how much better you were than most of the other 21-year-olds. And to, to, to make that, like, an obtainable or, like, a, like a useful maxim here, it's like, I, I think it's important for anybody once you start to reflect on how people are doing better than you that's an important moment of self-reflection and you can let that overwhelm you if you're a weak coward uh, who's not willing to like face that reality down and accept it but the thing to realize is that even if you're like a fucking 55 year old man and you're just realizing this shit now you cannot change the past but what you can do is take a real hard look at where you are in life right now and start to make mature rational decisions about how to get where you want to go using the tools at your disposal Disposal. It's pointless to get upset at people who are younger than you and who have done better and been more successful, whatever. All you can do is recognize that you have control over things happening right now. And I know this is just an well, intellectual point that won't matter to a lot of people and it's useless. I don't know but... whether I don't know whether it has to be like a rational decision. Like you can't just say, fuck it, I'll just try something and see what happens. Like at that point Well the, that's part of what I'm saying. Know, I mm -hmm. either or like if you if, you can either like plan it out or you can go for it. And at that age, you know, well, like, if, if your decision I, is just like, to try like, something instead of trying nothing, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying is yeah, a much yeah. better use. Because, like, mm -hmm. like, obviously, trying st starting stuff later is harder um, mm -hmm. to, to get good uh, and stuff. Like, if you're a kid and you learn a skill, you'll be great at that skill by the age of 12 if you start at, like, mm -hmm. five. Mm -hmm. Because that's when your, 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 you know, your baby muscles are growing and, and, and flexing <laughs> and, like, you're, you're made of plasticine or whatever. <laughs> and that's like how I learned English. Yeah. Yeah. So like um it's it is harder to do it but it's um but it's either that or give it, up you know try yeah. or give up that's all you can do I I I I don't like motivational quotes because I feel no like try. they they do or do not uh. just like that one <laughs> <laughs> well like yeah <laughs> like um yeah I'm trying not to like sound like a motivational speaker when I'm saying right. uh you just do it haha Nike like it, it's, you don't want to it, sound it like a motivational simple. speaker while but you're that, speaking about I mean, motivation th there's there's that phrase uh, and then also like it's, fake it's it. mostly because like motivational speakers yeah. generally I feel like um never actually say anything like like yeah. It's a bunch the, of the, the, bullshit. Like I made a video about this a while ago, a vlog, where it's like it feels like it's a, like a temporary boost, where it right, makes yeah, people right. feel like they might be able to do something, and then ten minutes later they're like, I can't do it because they didn't get any actual like information on what to do. Well, that's motivational their responsibility. speech is is just like when you hit a boost in Mario Kart. You get ahead for a little bit and you feel more confident, but then you get red shelled and like there's no fucking point anymore. Like you are dead. You were gonna yeah, lose but you that just race. gotta keep driving. You gotta keep trying you gotta and finding keep driving exploits and, and try to hit every Sometimes boost. Sometimes some yeah. people just need that bit of a push to you know reach the goal. You know, sometimes yeah. not always. Yeah. Like I Sometimes. personally don't don't like general speeches like like uh, on Twitter or whatever. People like post, hey, remember. Whoever you are, you're beautiful today, inside and hmm. out, or something. I like hate that, that shit and so much. I, uh, I re yeah, I. It, I it devalues the times when you actually are. You know? <laughs> yeah. Also, mm -hmm. also like I know that I'm not pretty today. I like maybe I just woke up. I haven't combed <laughs> my hair, and I'm still like sure. you know groggy and like I have bags under my eyes. Well, actually, I have dark circles under my eyes rather than bags <laughs> when I'm tired. Like, yeah, I feel gross. And there's this like Twitter post just like, yeah. hey, remember you're beautiful, and I'm just like very like cynical. I think that's the word. And just like. <laughs> No, I'm not. Fuck off. Well, I think I don't need this I shit think, in the morning. I understand why, like some people, some people might need that because they never feel good about themselves. But like, if you're somebody who's capable of recognizing the difference, like, yeah, you shouldn't feel like it makes it more powerful when you have put in effort to like shit on yourself when you have it. Like, there's a yeah. I've I've known yeah. a lot of fat people who have like a really huge uh, boogie is a good example of this. He talked about this in the HD podcast that he's very mm. against the healthy at any size thing. Um, boogie good the man. YouTuber by good the way, anybody who doesn't know what I'm yeah. talking about. Boogie two nine eight eight, of course. He's course. about to get a, uh, a a gastric bypass uh, so that he can finally like he has I believe to burn, he already like, did. Pounds. I, I did think that podcast it? is pretty old. So yeah, that that's oh, already okay. happened. I think people well, have talked about losing weight. Well, mm. in any case, he was talking about how like you know. 
like if you are just confident in yourself while you're fat, then like how will you, you 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 need to lose yeah, that way. Like you're yeah. literally not healthy at any size. And like once you Damn have right. done it, like you get to feel that confidence. Like if I look like shit when I wake up. And, and I and I look at myself and I go, I'm beautiful. Then like I'm just gonna look like shit all day, I guess. This but, is like, why you know, this is actually you, putting this in is the why, effort to make myself look good will give me the confidence. Show. You know, like this is why nobody can hate Boogie. Stuff, Boogie, everyone loves Boogie, and it's for exactly these reasons. But yes, please, Mage, go on. I like um. So I was having like a major health issues earlier in the year and a little mm-hmm. bit before. Um, during that time, I lost quite a bit of weight due, due to the health issues. And honestly, mm-hmm. like after. After I recovered and had the surgery and whatever, like I felt like, like I haven't felt in such a long time. I haven't yeah. felt depressed. I felt more confident. I felt like getting up and doing things. Like holy shit, I got so super like, I, I got I got shit done. <laughs> <laughs> Great, yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah. Do you I, feel I'm more like, confident? Yeah. Having done I, all that, yeah. Yeah, I definitely like. Uh, like, like now it's coming back because I think it's seasonal depression but like during the summer and mm-hmm. early autumn and stuff and right right and like late spring after the surgery like I haven't felt that good in such a long time and honestly I, I don't want to attribute it all to like losing the weight but like mm-hmm. def- something definitely changed like like noticeably so and I I oh man I, I, I love it's worth love taking note of. It is yeah, not. Yeah, it is just... not bullshit to say that like health matters to one state of mind, you know, and, and yeah, fitness I in general. I was like, yeah. just like, I I was so surprised how much of a difference it made. Like I, I always, you know, I was mm-hmm. always told that you know, you know, it's healthier, and I'm like, yeah, I know it's healthier, and like I would like to do something about it. Uh, and I try and and whatever, but like I I never never realized how much of an impact it actually does. Like no. just remember everybody, remember everybody. Fat shaming saves lives. Keep it up, everybody. We've I'm got not, a duty to go I, I out there. I want to say not even just uh, being fat, but like fucking just <laughs> being healthy is a huge confidence boost because you feel like you can fucking do things. Like I am a shit eater. Like I <laughs> I don't eat very big proportions, which is why I don't really gain weight. But the stuff I eat is not good for me. And like sure. there's a lot there's way too many days that I'm just sitting around bloated and I can't do anything. Because I <laughs> oh, also, I go out um, and I eat so like I eat a pound of grease and then I just fucking I sit on the couch like, and like I just like four hours of uh, I don't really want to work. My fucking stomach hurts. Look like, at the dude, fucking Ubermensch. K- Casey Neistat is a is a monster yeah, man of fitness. Literally and working work. fucking yes. constantly because all he drinks is fruit Guys. shakes and he runs yeah. ten miles a day. Uh, uh, yes, talking mage. Quickly about like confidence mm. and feeling better and whatnot. Like, um, there's also like a. I, I, I noted like, a significant difference a lot of people have noted like if your surroundings are less cluttered and organized and clean. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it oh, has yeah. an effect on your mood. As also, sunshine. Sunshine helps, which is why you're sunshine. right. This, this is, is why all real. Cur- currently, uh, me and my girlfriend have been experiencing the same like manic depression. Like, like even though we're both <laughs> incredibly happy with each other, like because we we kind of let our house get messy at the same rate, and it's there's no fucking daylight anymore because we live in the north and it's uh, right, you know right. winter. So like the sun goes down at fucking four, and uh, like. We've both just been kind of like, uh, like very like low energy kind of rut and like just smoking pot all the time to to deal with it. Cause like, yeah, it's it's hard to keep up with your environment. It's hard when you don't have sun. It's hard to like want to go do things when you don't have that. Fuck! Don't live here. Don't live in the north. <laughs> don't live where there's no sun because you will never want to go out. Cause it's yeah, fucking it's dark by the time um, you have time. Move having, somewhere sunny. Lights <laughs> on is a. Uh an okay substitution like what i'm doing personally to deal with this problem oh, yeah, i, don't I just like i never i never fucking turn off the light bulb even when it's daytime it's it's always going to be like yellow in my room because oh. of the light bulb i wish it was a brighter light bulb honestly but but yeah like i never turn it off because i need the brightness otherwise i'm going to be I sad i mean the human beings need like like why does one gain muscle it's it's a response to 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 pressure it's a re- your body is coping with this issue the body needs challenges to like maintain itself and we live we are, we are lucky enough to live in a time when so much of our lives are made incredibly easy and as a result like our bodies fucking degenerate and fall by the wayside and we we ignore them we don't give a shit about them cuz like we're not we haven't caught up to the lifestyle yet we're not fully adapted to deal with this shit yet so you know everybody you got to take responsibility for your own shit manage your body manage your life 
you, you got to do the shit. When are but we in- changing the name of this podcast to Bro Science the Podcast, by the way? That's, <laughs> that's all this Soon. podcast is these days. I swear yeah, to God. Yeah. You're not wrong. <laughs> Incidentally, team, we've been going for quite a while here, and we should yeah, I got probably a bunch shift of to questions, questions lined up. Oh, I how, fucking, how good. I trolled through the whole fucking Discord. Fan Incredible. Di- but pay- if you want to fucking get your questions read on the show, become a patron. Of, mm-hmm. like, anything. You get access to the Discord. They, they ask questions. Uh, we read mostly those. Occasionally a Twitter one. Um, what's the Twitter thing, Nate? What's the hashtag? Oh, oh it is hashtag AskPCP, of course. Yeah. All right. Uh, I got a couple of these are, like, burn-throughs, and a couple of them are real interesting. So, uh, first... Let's go to Burner. Me, yeah, I want to know. I, mm-hmm. I feel like none of us might have something to say about this, or maybe one will. Uh, me Cool Man asks, how important is clothing slash fashion in your life? Hmm. Increasingly so. Not, Not at, at all. all. Yeah. Not okay. No. Okay. <laughs> if somebody, I mean, stays the home, thing is, like, you got to understand yeah. is that I stay at home, or I go work in an abandoned building where no one's around. So, like, I have no reason to even try. Like, I shower very rarely. Has, I don't comb my I, hair. I, I don't do shit because no one's there. No one's uh-huh. there to even know that I smell like a fucking like pile of shit. So it's just like, <laughs> why? If yeah. why even bother? When I go if the climate I'm allowed it, mm-hmm. I would wear just shorts and nothing else. Shorts are comfy and times. easy to wear. But seriously, when, I love them. They're great. When, when I go out <laughs> outside of the house, I try to look presentable. Like, nothing people would stare at, basically. You know, I don't mm-hmm. want to be yeah. stared at when I'm out. She but ain't no thought, I'm, like, gentlemen. <laughs> but, but, but when I'm inside, I just, I just, I just wrap myself in in, in my uh, Cheeto-scented robe and just sit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, sit around in whatever. I, oh, it, it it's it's good in in winter because like you can wear a coat and it doesn't really matter what you're wearing underneath. Yeah. You know, yeah, coat looks yeah, I, okay. I, I, uh, but in summer, you're like, oh, uh, uh, what t-shirt do I wear? This is important now. People can see it. They can see like, my body. Like, I I like t-shirts because they're comfortable, but I also don't like going outside in just a t-shirt because now people can see my arms. <laughs> is that yeah. bad? I don't like people. It's it's just a it's just a weird well, thing. True. Like once I once I you know do it like like um I used to never like uh not wearing socks. Like people would go out in summer uh they, to the park and they would have sandals on or something. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I, and I, I socks. you know I I wore socks with sandals because I didn't I didn't like the idea of not wearing. Badass. Um, <laughs> I, I I didn't like the idea of not wearing socks and uh oh yeah here's the thing I for, for one for a long time. For for a long time, I I only had this one pair of brown shoes, and brown shoes do not look good with shorts. I wore these to BronyCon, uh, and okay. they looked terrible, and I looked like a fucking silly boy, <laughs> um, wearing my, okay. my my brown shoes with my shorts. Um, and uh, get some get some trainers, please. I, Everybody should get wear, at least a pair of trainers yeah. so that they don't have brown shoes with shorts. I wear socks That's the with worst sandals look. all the time, and I think it's uh, anybody who says you shouldn't is just like full of shit. Um, but I, <laughs> it's like the whole pizza pineapple thing. It's just a meme at this point. It's a meme. Point. Well, look, yeah, kind of. My metric for how successful what I'm dressed as is is does my girlfriend think I'm hot. Because that's the only thing that matters. Like, I don't have to impress anybody else. I have Did to you, I impress... hate to tell you, but she'll think you're hot no matter what you look like. That is that's not a good standard true. to use. Yeah, that's yeah. why I just dress in whatever I want. Because, <laughs> like, I mean, who... Why else would I dress up? Like, who am I trying to impress other than... For society. For society at who, large. Who, who in, in society needs to be impressed with me? Well, okay, there, there is a real thing where people like to look nice because it just makes them feel good. They feel, you know, happy and confident. I, that's, I a thing. Feel, that's a thing. I feel better... Um, I like to exert my dominance on the world. Like, I enjoy sure. the feeling that, like, when we go to a fancy restaurant, like a really nice one, and mm-hmm. I'm in pajama pants, I feel like a god. <laughs> because everyone else, the reason everyone else in there is dressed nice is that they had to dress nice to get that money. Like, you had to probably I work guess. at a... Well, think <laughs> That's about a it. That's simplification, like, what kind I think. Of, like, the kind of job you would have to work to make a lot of money and be able to, to, to afford this food would probably require you to dress nice, right? Like, most jobs that pay well, you have to dress nice. I'm so. making the kind of money that lets me eat in this restaurant, and I show up in fucking pajamas. Because I also made that money wearing fucking pajamas. So that makes me feel like a fucking god, you know? I get your yeah. point. I get your point. I, I, I like the idea of, like, not caring about what... Because I don't really care about what I wear when I go out. It's yeah. just, um... I've had I've had history of caring a lot, and I've just sort of 
gotten rid of that slowly. Right. And um, like you know, if 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 I like the the way I feel when I go outside, then that's yeah. all I need. I hear I mean, you. I see myself as like a slightly understated version of like a SoundCloud rapper. Like mm-hmm. most, because like when you see like famous people, especially musicians, like when they're out in public, they're always fucking. They got like face tattoos and like weird dreads and like all kinds of shit. And it's just because they're like, yeah, they made their money looking that way. Like that's the culture they're representing, and like that's what people resonate with, and so that's what they're gonna look like all the time. I, and, I hear what you're you know. saying, did you? But you, you do in your in your profession here have the freedom to look like whatever you want. You know, you could yeah. you could dress and shoot and tie like our hero uh, report of the week if you chose to. And uh, I, I you could, know. but I, I, it just wouldn't. I don't think it would match my content really. Like, I if think you say the, so. I think the style I have is very much about like embracing this personal self-image and like, you know, I'm a guy who wears pajamas and sunglasses indoors and mm-hmm. uh, and anime shirts and like that's what I'm comfortable with and I think I look okay in it and I think it matches the style that I'm doing. If I was in a suit, it would be fucking weird. Like. Well, that's what they said about Report the of the Week, and then he became the greatest YouTuber of all time. I don't know so. who that is. Yeah, but he he also has oh the slick back ha- hair, of the week. and he's like, no, I never heard of him. Holy shit! Okay, well, he's 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 Red the wholesome you on that boy. Later. He's the wholesome suit man. Yeah, he's the he's the he's the fast food reviewer who wears the suit and tie, and uh, you know, you never, really I, don't know I, this I, what, guy. I, no, he he I'm he, he did a review I don't of know very of, many of 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 uh, what? of a uh, store bought water. If <laughs> H- if, if H three reviews him or uh, has him on his show, then I'll know who he is. Just okay. Look at th- just look at this picture. Let's just take a second here and look at this picture I'm looking at right now. There. Okay. This 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 guy doesn't look familiar at all to you. He's weird looking. I, uh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. But he's a legend. All right. Well, whatever. Okay. We don't need to dwell. All on right. This any next longer. question. Um. I like this one from Giffy. He asks, do you think we should tell children that Santa is real or rip the Band-Aid off early? And follow-up from Antimatter Tape, do you think we should tell Christians that God is real or rip (laughs) off the (laughs) Band-Aid early? (laughs) Oh, Uh, that's good. Those are both very similar. That's that's a a very smart reply. Both of them from birth. They're both bullshit. You think so? I I actually, I I feel differently. Here's what I, can, I think. I can I th- definitely lie to my kids. <laughs> I, I think what I want to teach my kids is uh, Santa's not real, but they should play along. Yeah, that's definitely what you I, should do. Like, well, I, yeah, wa- I, I want to teach them that they are smarter than all the other kids in their class, and they hmm, should pretend hmm. to be dumb so they can fit in and so they can manipulate <laughs> people. In I, their just think, I just think uh, this, is, right. this is just a cycle of just like horrible uh, mental damage we do in the world as we treat kids with these these special like soft gloves we like pull our punches we tell them the world's full of magic and and great things and then like you hit but, a certain well, age like actually no well, everything on, sucks and now you're a part I of mean, it I mean you're entirely right that is how we teach children but the facts of the matter are children are not fully rational beings the way that adults are they cannot be expected to behave you know as logical operators the way that we at least expect no, adults to of course not you have so, to you have to, there, there has to be a Keep you need mind. to teach kids, but you don't need to teach them the wrong things. Okay. Guys, okay. guys, guys keep yes. in mind that, like, kids consume a lot of media nowadays. And, like, mm-hmm. when Christmas rolls around, they're going to see a lot of Santa Clauses everywhere. So it's and- going to, like... Mm-hmm. They can I, can I have a random aside Christmas here for a second? Point where they are One not going to believe you over the media. So it's I mean, gonna be how many kids... How many kids like believe in like? I feel like you would learn it's not real really fucking young now with the internet, you know? Right. Like, yeah, how maybe. how many kids are out there who don't figure it out immediately? Well, like, I mean, this is a question of like intent. Should you lie to your kids? Is like the real right. is the real H- question. H- here's the, my problem with that question. Okay, is that I have no idea why anyone cares because <laughs> i don't see the ramifications of like oh no my world is fucking falling up no kid has ever no, yeah. done that i that's true I, no kid has become depressed I because actually, santa wasn't I real actually, unless they're actually autistic I, in which case mm-hmm. you should just keep telling them that i quite clearly remember a moment where like my mom accidentally dropped the bomb that the easter bunny wasn't real and then after that i extrapolated and realized like holy shit none of this shit's fucking what the the fuck like i remember that happening to me yeah. but like it's looking funny, back on that it that happened in reverse for me because i remember my mom actually told me about this at one point when i was like oh, older yeah. about the story of how i found out santa wasn't real because uh-huh. i asked her about it and i grilled her for a little bit she's like you know what it's not real sorry <laughs> and and i was just like okay and then the part that i remember that was funny is that she said she's like she distinctly remembered i walked away a couple steps and i turned around and looked at her again and i'm just like a bunny, and she's like, "No, it's not real either." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. 
Uh, I don't. I, I just can't. Like, I don't see. To me, it's like I want my kids to know as much shit as possible as fast as possible, and like sure. I don't see the I point. I think of, that's like, important. I don't see the point of like, holding like, this do. information uh, for four years and then being like, "Oh, by the way, I was lying about that," and they just be like, "Oh, okay. Why? Why'd you tell me it was real in the first place?" And like, I'm like, like, I don't know. I, 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 I'd want my kids to know a lot of stuff, but Santa is like, I like Christmas. It's a joy. It's well, like I a, don't. It's so like that's a, a big ooh, difference. Nice. Between I love it's Christmas. Like, it's like a. It's like a uh-huh. It's it's a happy time and it's like it's cool. Like I remember this one memory of of coming down uh, to see the the presents under the tree and there was like fake snow and it wasn't there the day before and I was like, oh my god, it snowed indoors. I had no idea it was <laughs> fake. I couldn't tell. I was just like, oh, that's cool. I, this, this this throws a wrench into my idea that okay, maybe see, it's not the, real the because there's about, actual snow here. The thing about Santa that that irks me I, I on its face i actually don't see a lot of problem with the idea of like telling kids about like a, a fake man who brings them presents i think that's a cute story and i generally like it but what i do not like is the way that it is a tool to control the behavior of children uh, by telling yeah. them oh, that, that only sucks. if they're good then they'll get presents and then they'll get cola that I do not like. I really dislike that. The, yeah. Just the idea of like, I love Christmas, and I'm the biggest atheist you'll ever fucking meet. I'm, a, I'm an anti theist. I hate God. I will kill that man when I meet him. Uh, like it's. <laughs> I love the Christmas tree. I love the the community spirit. I love being around my family. I love just the warm vibes and cinnamon floating through the air and, and apple cider and and, and eggnog my and family. Holy shit. It's <laughs> yeah. I, I love my family a lot, but we're all very cynical about Christmas. Dude, we need to do a fucking Christmas PCP. Oh, that's a great idea. We that's need a great to do a idea. PCP. I, I'm signing up right now, yes. live on the podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's I'm a not fantastic idea. Surprise, surprise! I'm gonna go to visit my family for Christmas. Oh, that's right. Oh, I don't mean on Christmas. I mean we should do it next oh. week. <laughs> I'm gonna be at work yeah. on Christmas. So really, just like, on a, just like I was. I work every holiday for no extra pay. No extra pay. What do you? Uh, Whoa! God, how can no. they get away with no extra pay? Have, some, if some you saw can. where, I, if you saw the conditions of the building that I worked in, I, you'd be like, "How I is it legal it, to work there?" It probably isn't legal. There, like, I, I mean, yeah. legally, I thought you're supposed to get paid a half. I mean, don't, don't you work under the table or something? Isn't that the, no, like, the arrangement? No, no, he just no? he the guy owns half the town. So if I tried to do anything, he would oh. just like crush me. So there's nothing oh. I can do about it. Well. Merry Christmas, well, everyone! Yeah, <laughs> Jesus, fuck. literally working for Mr. Scrooge on fucking yeah. Christmas. Like, you'll literally. be the tiny, you'll be tiny Tim coming it's to tiny his Tom. door, and you'll be fucking <laughs> wasting away. It's tiny it's, it's, Tom. It's, it's tiny Tom, <laughs> even tiny though he's Tom. he's gigantic. He's, yeah, he's, that's he's, fucking he's, great. Oh. It's not talking about what you think it's talking about. Let me let me just clear that up right <laughs> yeah, now. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Okay, well, knows let me Tom's just say. Got a huge uh, cock. <laughs> about the, about the Santa well issue, of course. Issue PCP lore. About the Santa issue, uh, I, I have yet to fully grapple with the uh, the moral implications of teaching my children about like uh, the the control over them that Santa has. But I think that it's a very cute story about a man bringing presents to children all over the world, and I love Christmas in general and the tree and all that shit. So okay, I, I don't I'm, know why you I'm had a little clarify all that. I uh, felt like Chi- it is why. Chiaro asks a question for Mage: What are your art ambitions? What are you doing with the draw pencil and stuff? Hmm. Oh fuck. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was like, this know. is a really heavy question. The question is, what's a. what's your end game, Mage? What's your end game? I don't have an end game. I, I, I just, expected that. Like, I never had a beginning <laughs> game. I just, I, just, I just picked up a pencil one day and I doodled and I was wow. like, I like this and I continue doing okay. this and okay. I'm still doing it. That's that's great, Mage. I, you want to know why? You. Because you can't fail. It's impossible to fail. Mm. Whatever mm, you do true. is just good. Only that's the opposite of me. I just want to be like have like a cult <laughs> following. I want to have tons of money and like be able to live by myself and not be fucked with all this like yeah. employment shit. So there's better, there's a high there's do. a high skill ceiling for that or a high skill floor I should say. Mm-hmm. Takes I a lot of money. I just, I just, I just I want like to keep improving for no real reason other than being better than well, I was. Well, that's nice, mage. Aren't you uh, doing a comic at the moment? Yeah. Yeah. This sounds like okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right, let's let's, let's stop making her have to answer. This oh wait, guys, anymore. I have a great question. A great, a, a great pity question from our uh, people on the uh, on the on the Twitter here, the Ask PCP folks. Yeah. All right, you're all gonna like this, I think. At XG Upload asks, would you kill someone if you could get away with it? 
And I think I know the answer everyone's going yes. to give. The answer Absolutely. is yes. Absolutely. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. There are plenty uh, of people. I, um, and and don't could, get uh, me wrong. I almost, no. like, I am not generally in favor of killing. I don't think it's anything I could do under normal circumstances. But mm-hmm. there's, like, a couple of people who, if I could kill them, I'd get, it. I, and get away with it. I'd fucking do it. Um, I, I feel like I wouldn't be able to forgive myself for murdering. So what about, like, a mass murderer, though? Caught. Like, if you got, like, a death note situation and you know about, like, some mass murderer from, like, the African, right. well, you know, rape gangs I, or whatever. I mean, it, 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 it's a nice idea to think I wouldn't be affected by having killed oh, a person. Oh, I see. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah. I, I, I likely would, even if it was a mass murder, I'd be like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm just as bad as him. Like, it would, ah, it would haunt me. Okay. Okay. Even if okay. I got... No, yeah. the people who <laughs> yeah. kill are all out of personal spite. Just people I, of course. who my life would be like <laughs> I mean, if they were I'm dead. also imagining that I'm doing it with a box cutter for some reason. So. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Oh, all right. So that would be more traumatic. <laughs> I, 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 I think, I mean, I, yeah, why I wouldn't... Do they, why should I reward these people with the sweet embrace of death? <laughs> Let them suffer through life like the exactly. rest of us. Exactly. Well, uh, maybe you could kill, like, your best friend, you know, as an act of mercy. That That's the thing to do, you know? <laughs> No. Spare, spare Tom from this cruel embrace of life. You know, that'd I was be about nice. to say, if I was going to kill anybody, I'd finally have the confidence to kill myself. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. Indeed. All right. Uh, antimatter tape. This is actually kind of a difficult question because I want to mm. take it as an absolute. Antimatter tape asks, mm. what's the one thing you've always wanted to be able to do yet you've never pursued? Playing piano, drawing, making good videos, etc. And I, I want to emphasize oh. never pursued. Like, I can't say drawing because I've tried to draw. Um, my answer hmm. is building stuff. Like, I've always okay. had, like, I always kind of look up to, like, people who are, like, um, like, carpenters and stuff like that. Like, people who can just, are good with their hands, because mm-hmm. I'm not at all. And, like, in the rare instances where I have to, like, build a piece of furniture, I feel like, oh, man, I'm doing, like, what I'm supposed to do as, like, a man, you know? Like, the yeah. hyper-masculine idea that, like, we are here to build shit. And, like, I'm generally not handy, and I wish I was, but I've never really pursued it because it takes time to learn. I sort of feel this way about it, car stuff. Like, I I like people, I respect people a lot who, like, know about car stuff because it's knowledge that is very useful in our current modern lives. Yeah. Like, cars are, like, the biggest thing we depend on that are incredibly complicated machines. And if you just at least understand the fundamentals of how they work, like what a radiator is, how the engine works, the various belts and stuff, then you can, like not panic like I do when something goes wrong and you're like afraid to look into it. And so you would put it off for months. Uh, Yeah, that's me. Real real quick to follow up on what I said, like Mm. what makes me the most jealous is fucking when Casey Neistat, when he like wants to make some new prop or something and he just fucking builds it immediately. Uh, He's got like all those tools and he's got all this equipment and he just, he just knows how to build things. And like his, one of his mottos is like, there's two kinds of people uh, in this world, people who make things with their hands and people who don't, and I'm like, ah, I'm one of the people uh, who don't. Ah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, does editing videos count? Probably not. Probably not. Uh. Uh. Okay. Well, um, anybody else? Well, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm trying to think because like the uh, never pursued is like I pursued like in some small way everything I want to get yeah, good at. That's yeah. Why it was hard like for I've me. tried yeah. I've tried cooking before. I've tried I've tried learning languages before. I, have, I don't know. Like I, I have, can't think of one thing. I have an answer for this. Okay. I don't. I don't know if Digi's gonna say it doesn't count. Uh, but my my answer is um, getting good at math. I I love the that idea counts. of math. I think it's very like I feel useful skill. But I'm just so fucking retarded. Like yeah. like I, I Dude, can't. Do math it. math is a fucking math is a foreign language from a country. I don't. I've never heard the name of. To me, hmm. it's hmm. you know. I just. I would if I could. I, I just I want to I want to so bad because it's like the coolest shit ever. Yeah. But I just I'm too dumb. Too That's dumb. That's cool. That's I, cool. I, Gotta I watch number thing. file. He's, He's right. right. Okay, He's so right. like I'm I'm not sure if it counts. Never pursuing. Um, but like singing. Like oh, back in school when we were required to have like song lessons and stuff like that. I I. Oh, that's a good answer. Um, there was also like a little choir thingy that people could join. Um, mm-hmm. t- like usually the t- teacher would pick and like. I asked if I could be on it, and my teacher said my voice wasn't good enough, and that's the end of that. <laughs> so Lol, should, got him. Does that, does that count as... Kind of that should be that the person like you counts. fucking murder. If you, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, Mage, I, I actually feel quite similarly. Um, it's just the only difference, I think, here is that, like, I, I mean, I, I have done some singing, but, like, I really want to, like, become 
maybe sort of professional level at singing. Like, I'd really like to spend some serious time improving yeah. the way I sing I, so I, would I could. Too. For me, yeah. it's like I'm living in this torment because, like, I mm-hmm. sometimes have these really wonderful, awesome, vivid dreams where I can actually sing. And mm-hmm. my, so, like, Whoa. and it's not just like I can sing. My voice is, like, so fucking beautiful that I belt out, like, a melody. Ah. And, like, I literally stop wars with my voice. Ah. Everything <laughs> stops. That's You're just cool. dreaming like, Macross. Time, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Exactly. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Dreaming what? Macross or Macross. Robotech. It's like, that's the plot, is that a girl, like, I, stops <laughs> alien wars with her singing. Oh, okay. I what did, a badass. I did not know that, but... Yeah. I, it's I great. These, you should uh, But basically, it. so I have, like, this feeling like... Dude, I imagine if that was Gib with his guitar instead in Macross. Wouldn't that be, That would be, be like... Macross 7, where it's a guy with oh. a guitar. <laughs> Listen to my song. The Excellent. Band Firebomber. But, yeah, basically... Or I 21st just, Century Digital Boy. <laughs> I, just, I just have, like, a song second side and i just i just i just want to sing like sometimes when i was younger i would just like sing to myself when no one knows that i'm doing a very quiet voice so no one sure. could hear me sing <laughs> but like I, I i don't i don't have an ear for it i'm not good at singing and mm. it can be learned uh, though it can be learned with hard work generally mm, yeah i just i i wish i'm I actually just, quite inspired good. <laughs> recently my, my my girlfriend was telling me that like markiplier recently like spent some serious time improving his voice to become a good singer and from what i hear he has dramatically improved and this gives me great confidence well he already, he already had a great voice he had, he had a good he has a good speaking voice and his singing voice was good but he has certainly he has worked on and honed it into a great voice and, and i don't know I, mean, I feel like if you already have a great like speaking voice and you speak every day well, that you i mean Nate, getting he, good at singing is not Gonna be Nate well, does have. Is Nate has though. all of those things, though. That's what he's saying. Exactly. So like, I can have confidence. I can improve in a serious yes. way. Like <laughs> Nate is already uh, the best, one of the better singers. I even like. You're better than me, and I consider myself a competent mm-hmm. singer. Um, I got a new song coming up pretty soon, everybody. You can you, you can look forward to that. Definitely, could become I don't a good singer. See a speaking mm-hmm. and singing as like part of the same talent because some people are like talented voice actors, but they can't sing for shit. Yeah, Tara Strong, well, for example. Uh, you know, what I mean. Much of a what I mean is the a, a lot of a, a lot of the singing is just being able to say things really loud because that's what singing is. Right. And if you're not good at talking loud, it's going to be more difficult I mean, to when, when sing. I singing, I was I was more like thinking of like like I'm not even saying words. I'm just like making melody with my voice. So I'm just like you know one well, yeah. one one sound, but mm-hmm. like I I change it up to make a melody out of it. Like. Being able to do that, that would be, like, the best thing. I, does anyone want to comment on this? Because there's actually someone posted a, a, a question on the Twitter that's kind of a, a just an update well, wait, to the I, other I, question. I, I didn't – I had I had one one of my oh, – A question or update response. To this question? No, no. This was to a previous one. So, yeah, please finish your point, and then I, I just want to add this. Other well, thing. Uh, I, I thought of what uh, mm-hmm. I wanted to do but never pursued is mm-hmm. uh, start a band. Yeah, um, okay. Because playing guitar is fucking easy. But you the Batten the Family Band is renowned guitar. across the land. I mean, I mean, for their breakout it, it album, cool. Hillary. Hillary. <laughs> yeah, that was that was fun. But like, like starting a band is 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 so much more like social, and you have oh, yeah, to go yeah. out and play in clubs and what, and you know, look at people and. Uh, my friend did a bit of that. And go but, go yeah. up and talk to people and say, "Hey, uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm, you want to join my band? Like, it's the sort of thing you can only really do I, in school. I have kinda. pursued that, and it's like and... I, I I missed the boat, and then I try I I didn't even think about trying to do it outside. I was just like, I guess I'll just Dude, learn guitar. Yeah. I I am so amazed that any band ever. <laughs> like like that they like, do because like yeah yeah I you know I was a. Uh, I was friends with a ton of musicians in high school, and like we, tr- we, they had a fucking band. Like there was this band called the Fridayers, and it was because they practiced on Friday. It was my friend Marcus nice. on bass, Brandon Tolentino on guitar, this guy named Arn on on lead guitar, and this dude named uh, I don't remember the fucking drummer's name. I, I barely met him, uh, mm-hmm. Herbert. And like, and they wanted me to Herbert. sing for them, and I, I sang for them at one show. But like, even though they were all talented, except for Marcus, he couldn't play play bass for shit. But like, <laughs> both the guitarists were really good. <laughs> <laughs> and the drummer was uh, as good as he needed to be. And I am a competent singer. And I had written right, right. like lyrics. I wrote songs for these guys. They just wouldn't fucking practice or get organized at mm-hmm. all. Like there was That's just the breaker. no desire to organize themselves. Even though we like literally had songs that were good. Like just from like coming up with like riffs and me being like, that's a good riff. Play that one for eight bars, this riff for eight bars. And I'll sing this over it and that'll be a song. And they just wouldn't like 
do that and it's like this is impossible i don't know how it, any you, band you cannot comes together. it's it's tragic to me that you cannot inspire in people like a a, a will to drive or create yeah. or like you just you yeah. gotta have that at the, literally like, as a that's foundation. all it would have taken like it's, all the talent was there the know, songs yeah. were there it, all it would have taken is people sitting down for like two hours i i once and... met a man <laughs> i once met a man named ben saint and as much as i tried to tell him he could be cool he could be cool if he just applied himself he <laughs> just wouldn't listen and and here we are everybody <laughs> all right what Fuck was that you, like part of that is like i i i kind of want to to learn all the instruments myself mm -hmm. but recording is recording it's tough with man like, it's uh, tough recording uh, is the what worst do you call it? the the dum 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 clack like what do you call the drums that? The, the, the percussion metronome. oh oh yeah yeah metronome like like even with having that and, you know, doing all the things, I set it up like hundreds of times, not hundreds of times, mm -hmm. but like I, mm -hmm. I try over and over again and it never, I can never play in time with recordings of myself mm -hmm. and it always yeah. pisses me That's off. Hard. And all I really need to do is just go to YouTube and type in drum beat so I, that I have that. Sure. Yeah, but sure. I just I just don't care. <laughs> yeah, I that's wanted, the thing. I, wanted, I want drummers, I want a drummer yeah. to be there to do the thing. All right, Nate. What was that follow up? Because I got a great question I want to get to. Oh but, uh... yeah, it's it's real. It just this is a follow up to the uh, would you kill someone if you could get away with it? Someone else right before that asked the question. Uh, Turbo Cow four twenty. Uh, smoke me if you got him. Uh, would <laughs> would you murder someone to get ahead in life? And the answer is uh, absolutely, pr probably. No. It depends on the person. Yeah, depends depends on the person. I mean, if it's a again the same guy who I'd kill if there were no consequences. If yeah. also there were <laughs> benefits, the doubly. Watch out, um, Misty Cronexia. He's coming for you. No, no, no. No problem with Misty Cronexia. Yeah, uh, I know, I know. All right, here's a great fucking question okay. mm -hmm. um, from Cygris. Should we poison children to calm them down or poison uh, ourselves to not give a fuck? You mean like with drugs, I assume? Things yeah, of that nature. that's what I'm assuming. Which I thought hmm. this was... Okay, as Good someone question. Who, as someone who recently started taking Adderall recreationally, <laughs> I will say I will not give my kids Adderall. Unless they hmm. like need it, like unless they are unfunctional without it, because and why? Why is this? Because mm -hmm. it has a really fucking strong effect on you. Like it okay. really changes the way you think and act, and in a way that kids can't like make that decision. Like they can't tell, like if that's helpful for them or not. Like okay. Okay. even for me, like the amount of, I don't know, man. It really changes the way you think and like and act and like. Uh, if my kid's just kind of being a brat, like, a little bit, then I don't. I think it's, like, way overboard to, like, give them drugs, I mean, like, my, amphetamines, you know? I, I hear what you're saying. My, my buddy who I who I took some classes with, I remember one time, like, he just busted out, like, a couple pills of Adderall. But, like, what he would do is he would just, he would break them open. And you see, like, the little tiny beads in the pills. He would uh -huh. just take, like like three of those of like the tiny Weird. ones and there's That's like a hundred cool. within the pill i mean there's just a lot like of ways like to, that. that it could be yeah. beneficial and like if if my kids seemed like they needed it like i would, yeah. I would give it to them but like i think it's That's so over prescribed you know? and i know like mm -hmm. some of my friends like are horribly depressed as adults because they feel like like dr like adderall like ruined their life like the because they were like too good as kids and no, now they're just like made them into like a different person like uh mm -hmm. my friend mm -hmm. mike was like a total spaz as a kid so they put him on adderall and like it made him extremely antisocial. he like he never he just never really knew how to communicate with people and he yeah. was so docile and he, he felt like he wasn't true to himself and he feels like he wasted the last like 10 years of his life yeah that because, sucks man like being someone else who he's not and like that's just a lot to fucking do to a kid flippantly, like the yeah. way that our society yeah. does it. And I'm like, and again, if I can just poison myself to not give a fuck, then yeah, hell yeah, I'll take that route. I love poisoning myself. I want to be like, <laughs> I want to be the picture of Dorian Gray for my kid. Like, like, uh -huh, he, right. like he stays perfect and I just get uglier, you know, like. Oh, I know. like that. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. What a cool thought. <laughs> my solution is just not be around kids because fuck them. Yeah, we need to send them all to a oh, concentration well, camp where I, they I can like grow up to be I, perfect automatons. I, I, I'm just realizing this is a question that only me and Nate have probably thought about because we're the only ones with, like, plans to have kids in oh the... Oh, my God. You're oh, both yeah. insane. You're <laughs> both fucking insane. You know, I, uh... I mean, I don't know. 
I like the idea of having kids. I just don't you're, have you're, no you're idea all crazy. When. I'm t- Vincent and Charlotte are going to transform the world, everybody. Uh, what are they okay. going to? They're, they're going to be okay. a twin president. They're going to transform has, has your mi- world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, right. I don't know if you're planning to have uh, Vincent and Charlotte with Michelle, but have you run those names by her and like gotten approval on that? <laughs> I, I have got the contract signed in blood that these will be the names of our twins <laughs> like, that are like, will that, be enforced. Was that like brought yeah. up on an early date? Like, by the way, not that I want to have kids anytime soon, but uh, it will be. A deal breaker if I can't name them Vincent and Charlotte. <laughs> if, if you do not produce me twin god twins, uh, it will be, uh, that'll like, be the end they, for they you. They have to literally be like Daenerys Targaryen and her And Jamie brother. Lannister. Exactly. That's what we're going for. And they better be blonde, even though neither, neither I, of us why, are blonde. Where did you get Jamie Lannister, even though I said da- da- they are Oh, oh no. Daenerys. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm thinking of Cersei and, and Jamie. That's what came no, no, to mind no. for me. I mean, yeah, that, okay. that also works, but like I was thinking of right. Danny and her older brother, but like Cersei, they're, yeah. they're like in, insanely beautiful dragonborn children. You know? Okay, I'm with you on that. Yeah. Um, uh, we have we have discussed it briefly, and I think we, it was just a meme, because it, it is a meme for, for the yeah. most part. Not entirely a meme, but uh, a little, I mean, if she doesn't bit. care, then, you know. Yeah, I mean, if they don't care, then why not? Why not, you know? All right, uh, here's one that I don't even know if anybody will have an answer to, but maybe someone magically does. Uh, mm. One Spar asks, are there any cool dead malls near any of you? Um, there's a couple of cool live malls around me. Uh, yeah, if you go down, if you look down the chute, there's a dead Darth Maul over there. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> he died in episode one. <laughs> oh, I get to read the oh, whole question, good. though, because uh, it was... Uh, are there any cool dead malls near you? Like places that used to have open stores and people going in and out, eating Dippin' Dots, ice cream of the future in the past, <laughs> yeah. but now they're just empty, sad graveyards of corporate history. I had to bring that up because uh, Munchie was on a Dippin' Dots tear, like asking us a ton of questions about Dippin' Dots. And, he uh, was? And, and everybody joined in on that. And th- Dude, that was where I, I cut off the questions because it stopped it's, making sense. It's funny to mention that because uh, uh, at the Creationist Museum, that is my favorite thing in the world, that is near where I live in Cincinnati. It's in Kentucky, across the border. But uh, there, there were many like abandoned. Like the the Creationist Museum is still alive and kicking. But the Dip and Dot stands are abandoned <laughs> and decrepit. Which is like, I don't know. Is that like indicative Maybe of like that's why the they were future? Talking about no. It. Listen to this. Here's the metaphor. The future has died at the Creationist Museum, and only the minute. ancient, archaic past uh, knowledge lives on. It's interesting that you say that because yeah. I went to Six Flags like a couple months ago, and all the Dip and Dots places there were all abandoned too, oh despite my the place God. being open and thriving our Do future is over be... there is no future for us yeah. uh Wait, all right there's a there's a there's one um semi maybe it died by now mm-hmm. because it was a few years ago but like yeah maybe my sister uh, and her boyfriend at the time we were trying to go see a movie but we were late at this one mall so we quickly went to this other mall mm-hmm. uh, that i haven't been before to before and it was like partially dead because there's only like a few stores open most of them were already closed even though it wasn't closing time they seemed like Mm -hmm. permanently closed no one else was around and we went to the like the movies and we're like oh shit we're late Uh, is the movie still going and they're like we can run the movie for you if you want because (laughs) well so you're like the whoa weird that's interesting though deep level dead uh, well, I'll like give it. one spar another chance because we didn't have that much of a, an answer to that. But Let, let's make this question. our last question, by the way. I think it's oh, time I've, to wrap I've up. only got two more though. Okay, okay we'll do two more. We'll do two um, more. Mm-hmm. One spar's next question: PCP, if any of you were given the opportunity to go back in time and prevent your real identities from being revealed to the internet, essentially oh. reestablishing your anonymity, <laughs> would you take it? That is fascinating. Uh, yes, that is a fascinating question because I actually did that when I like made best guy ever. Uh, Kinda, yeah. I yeah, I'm in in a sense. So I, mean, I it's feel all like been revealed yeah. again. So yeah, but like now I'm like past it and it doesn't matter to yeah. me. Like like just how people will like bring up like oh look at Digi Brony MLP over here. Like right. no one can say like look at Keg Standard over here. It's like who are you talking about? What is they can. I don't understand. But uh, uh, I'm lucky because everybody have to knows do now. Is change eh. my username and change my art style a little, and no but one will know. But that's your. But that's yeah. your 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 corporate identity mage. I, the uh, lethal aurora mage brand is far reaching <laughs> and well respected. I'm just, I'm just saying, like no one mm-hmm. knows my identity, so this question. Oh, I see apply. what you mean. That's, that's why I was laughing a little bit. Like, uh, haha, okay. Mage just beat all of us. I mean, uh, um, that's true. It, uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Tom, you go. <laughs> I was just gonna say, I don't know if anyone. I mean, I guess some people know my identity, but I don't like throw it out there or anything. So I'm not too worried about it. Yeah. This is something I've been thinking about a lot lately because my identity is way too out there. Um, you share a lot of information. You do, we yeah, all do, but you I've especially. shared too much. Um, <laughs> it's gotten weird, and uh, but like I can't imagine. Like I can't just 
imagine preventing my identity from being revealed because that would just mean like changing the whole nature. Like just of everything yeah, who I've you are done. is like, to do this, is to like yeah. reveal yourself but, and do um, that. So you know. I have, I have given a lot of consideration to disappearing, and there sure, are ways sure. to do that. And all you really got to do is ghostwrite or not. You know, like just all you gotta do is kill yourself. What was, I mean, what was Jesse's idea for like the girl pony that he wanted to write for? Which is honestly like I've, what Sheepover is. That's like what Sheepover yeah, is. You I mean, know, I love Sheepover. New video today, everybody. Fuck yeah, I love I did Sheepover. Watch it. it was good, but it, it was it's, good. It's, it's it's not as hard as I think people would imagine. And I've kind of done this before. I've made like blogs under different names and just mm-hmm. like run it to a different audience and not told anybody it was me because I didn't yeah, want yeah. just because I didn't want my identity tied to it not even out of like any kind of fear i just wanted people to interpret the text differently like i didn't want them to think of it as something i wrote yeah I remove the baggage to, yeah mm-hmm. um i think anonymity is is a I, I i really appreciate the theory behind 4chan like the that's idea why i that, love 4chan still yeah, yeah I can unfortunately go like the theory doesn't like is in practice like not really that effective On but, uh, whatever. Um, it draws but, like, out the th- like people are going to cluster who want to say things that they cannot say in public so I, you get that too yeah. i have come to realize in recent times that i don't really like being famous i don't really like having my uh, as much of myself out there as i do and i mm-hmm. hope that in the future when my youtube thing kind of dwindles that i can just go straight for other people and 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 get rich behind the scenes that would be beautiful I don't know how serious it sounds I am nice. about that. But, I uh, crave attention like a dying, thirsty man craves water. And uh, <laughs> I will, I think I'll continue to do this shit as long as I live. Now, but perhaps when I get, you know, bigger, I might decide that I don't like it and I don't like all the attention. No. But uh, for now, I'm still going strong, personally. Has, has anybody, have any of you ever had like this weird thought of imagining like 30 years in our future where we're going to have all these like 60 and 70 year old vloggers? Yeah, I thought of that. I, don't I don't think, think people are going to change. Media will be the same at all. I agree. God, I don't I think agree. YouTube is going to survive like five more well, years. We're, we're going to have some oh, weird I paradigm. I feel like that's going to be a thing that still exists in some weird way. Like, yeah. oh man, that's going to be fucking odd. Uh, yeah. All right, one last easy question. Squid Miku asks, "What's your favorite strawberry thing?" Mine is strawberry milk. I just had a delicious from PF Chang's. I got myself a. Um, uh, it was like a v- what was it called? Like a Vietnamese volcano cake, which is just like Whoa. a chocolate cake with some strawberries on top and other fruits, and like came with uh, vanilla ice cream. And like what I love about strawberries the most is eating like other things, especially like a chocolate cake with a strawberry in it, just like a- a- the fruit of the strawberry. It is divinely delectable. Like that meme where you see uh, like the Kon meme of like the girl stealing the strawberry from uh, Mio's yeah. cake and she like breaks into tears. That's me. If anyone takes my fucking strawberry, it is the most delicious part. It is fantastic. So that that's my vote. That's my vote. Um I like strawberry jam the most. Mm. Mm. I uh, I'm a great like, like in in jam strawberry jam donuts and sometimes on toast. I don't know. Well, I like strawberry donuts. I don't have strawberry stuff that much. I, I want to clarify that like strawberry milk's like the only strawberry thing I like because I always grape and blueberry if there's an option. Like, but why does strawberry have to be just because it's not as delicious as uh, blueberry or grape? It could still be your favorite strawberry thing. Like I love strawberry frosted donuts as opposed to like those bullshit chocolate frosted donuts. Strawberry every time. I love those. They're, they're a niche product. But if, if blueberry is an option, I always blueberry. Well, uh, all right, Tom and me. Cheesecake mochi. Mm. Ooh, that sounds good. Mochi or mochi? Mochi. Mochi. Interesting. Mochi. Yeah. I'm not sure. Like, um, mochi seems like American, like something Americans would say, but I feel like you, the pr- proper pronunciation. Wait, what? Would what is mochi. this thing? Please describe the characteristics of this delicious food. Wait, mochi it's, is it's a, a Japanese. Round... Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Is Flush is it the round, yeah. squishy, like Japanese yeah. food thing? Oh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. I see. It, it could also be like called a different word, which is like the sweeter version of it. Uh, mm. It starts with a D. A didaku, dango? Didaku. Dango? No, 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 not dango. Um, I don't remember right now. It doesn't matter. But yeah, it's like the, for for the Westerners, it's usually just called mochi in restaurants mm. and stuff. Okay. Hmm. What about caramelized salted strawberries? That sounds delicious. Yeah. I, I, I want to make that an easy. Tom, what's your favorite strawberry thing? I just like strawberry milkshakes. I... Hey, bro, we, we had shit. mochi when I'm we met s- up, didn't we? Like, but oh, we did. Yeah. We went to a sushi. Yeah. We were playing Pokemon <laughs> Go. We had sushi. 
The sushi was made was cool. of Pokemon. <laughs> All right. We oh wrap my God. Yeah, we're this done. That's real it. Mind, yeah, this is like the longest. <laughs> Thanks for that extra shit. important question, Digi. You really ended on a positive, strong I note there. Just, I got you just want to talk about your strawberry milk. Bullshit. I just okay. thought we'd all have a one-word answer. All right. Uh, okay, good point. We Everybody, never have please go on over to patreon.com slash the procrastinators. New bonus episode is out right now. It is about Inuyasha versus Charlie Brown. We settle <laughs> we settle the debate. Say it without <laughs> We settle the debate at long last. If there's that and eight other bonus PCPs, we need to pledge five dollars to the Patreon, immediately accessible to you and all your buddies. Uh, 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 there, we've also got merch. We got Redbubble merch. You got PCB logos and artwork and stuff. You can get that on T-shirts and other types of things. Just go to the Redbubble link Have in the description. Have we sold any of that shit yet? Do I am seeing almost shit? every day people are buying more shit Holy from the PCP. Holy shit! Yeah. So you're in good Send company, us people. Send fucking pictures of you wearing it, and oh, we'll retweet yeah. it. Great idea. Oh, yeah. I'd, lo I'd love to see like how people use the stickers. Send like, we should like, send we, anything you have bought from the PCP. Take a yeah. picture of it on quickly, Twitter. Quickly, Did you? Tag us. We need to eventually have a contest of some sort. Oh, Who you're has the so most right. PCP merch. Oh, that's podcast. a great idea. <laughs> guys, Mage? Guys, uh -huh. guys, yeah, quickly. I just want to say this. Like, keep, keep, like, pay attention to the stickers. You'll see that some of them are facing in some directions, and some of them are pointing to some directions. Like, mm -hmm. I had this idea of buying all the stickers. And arranging them in like ma making a line that like everyone's pointing or like facing at someone's. And it's, I what are they just, pointing like, to? Cute. Where does it all lead? What's the narrative? What's the meta exactly. narrative behind these? Wow, exactly. fascinating. What, what it, are it, they? Like, like Hippo, Hippo he, he placed a little Tom and Mage one to point to the power button on the, on the PC. I thought that was like, How adorable. helpful. How helpful. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, I'm helping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's uh, adorable. I love it. I want, to, I want to see people use the stickers. And, and, and Yeah, send us, questions. send us pictures. We will retweet them, people. You'll be famous on the internet. Uh, also, uh, follow us on our Twitter for all the updates and whatnot, at TPCrastinators on the Twitter. And, of course, you're going to want to be subbed to the channel in general for all the various content that comes out on the PCP. But you already know that, fam. You're already a loyal subscriber, I am sure. So, uh, I, th I think that's Unless everything. Unless you're listening to this on Google Play or iTunes, oh, which course. you can do by searching for it, Procrastinators, two words, copyright, <laughs> and it's there, all the episodes. I'm so glad you're here to remind us about that, Tom, because I legitimately just don't remember because I don't think I about it. But it is important. I know you do. I, I'm not trying to downplay. I, I really have happened to start that doing exists. these ads in the middle of the episode as well, like oh, every you know, other right. podcast does. That's we should do it like we right some before questions. Maybe. We, we, we need some sponsorships. Dude, we God chill damn it. When so are we much gonna get less than any podcast that I listen when to? When are we gonna yeah, get we sponsored doing? by Casper mattresses? That's what I'm worried about. Yeah, I, I, I literally it's have been using one for years. They need to sponsor us. I love that mattress. <laughs> and then, are you serious? Because I was I've been listening to Biggest Problem and, yeah. and I dude I used keep mentioning them. I literally and I'm bought like, everything I need that a new Biggest mattress. Problem <laughs> advertised. <laughs> Send me a free mattress. That would. <laughs> I literally mattress. use Casper mattresses. Oh wait, did you, did you? Before we go, I know this is like totally like not something we should even ask on the podcast because not uh, relevant. But okay. was was taking it out of the box as cool as I hyped it up on yes. Biggest Problem? Because oh. it's, it's just that the box is so small, and when the bed <laughs> comes out, you because you can't, you literally could not get it back in there. It's like vacuumed right, into right. the box. So like, it's a. Uh, it's not something that you could read. You just like solved one of the mysteries of my life for the past like four Dude, weeks. Dude, I filmed an unboxing of it problem. for patrons. I can send you that video if Fuck. you want to watch and I, it. I, I, just, I need to know. I, I need to live like Harry. I, 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 I actually guys, had a Patreon guys, goal just, of buying uh -huh. a bed. End this I remember that. We haven't ended it yet. Yeah, all right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.